Okay, let's try it again. Distancing. Councilman Beal. Here. Councilman Bettina. Here. Councilman Phillips. Councilman Casella. Here. Supervisor Thurston. Here. Everyone, please rise. The pledge of allegiance. Saturday morning, welcome. You know, we're here to uh, hold a workshop, special workshop session. We don't have any specific agenda. You know, there are certain items that uh, we do plan to discuss uh, that was called for this purpose. And you know, what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll just uh, start into you know, the program uh, as far as the uh, town meeting goes for the workshop. And uh, I'll turn it over to Al Casella because you had first requested for a couple of items, and then the rest of the board, you know, we can talk about a, you know, a number of other things. Sure, so two items we wanted to talk about this morning that were on the agenda was Little League and soccer. Uh, we have the president of Little League here, uh, Jeff Tomlins, and we'll let him speak in a moment. I'm gonna say a few words, and then Jeff, you can come up and add any additional information that uh, you'd like to. So first of all, we had a successful uh, July 8th opening day, which sounds like that was a pretty good news story. Um, what we're looking to do is we want to see some of the improvements we want to make um, on Little League fields. Uh, we do know that uh, we've done some significant improvements on the fields, in particular R3. We do rent out um, all the Little League fields. So I think we've got about $11,250 worth of revenue we've, uh, we've incurred so far. I think Jessica got another two hundred fifty the other day. So we're up to about 11500 What I will tell you is that the Little League does a great job in maintaining those fields. That's not part of the contract. Um, and again, they do bring in the rental income here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some pictures of the, I'll call it the before and after of what they've done to make some of the improvements here. So this first one here is a picture of, I don't know if you guys can see it, I'll pass it around, but it's of uh, R3. So this is what it looked like originally. And then what happened was this past Sunday, Jeff and team went out there and this is what it looks like today. So a significant significant improvement which helps us you know and gives us the ability to be able to rent out those fields here's another little picture of again a lot of the improvements I'll pass those down in a second and actually on opening day I think this is a great picture here this is what one of the fields looks like now so a beautiful beautiful picture here from the maintenance that those guys do on the fields again they maintain all the fields now one of the things they ended up doing is and there's sorry one more is a t-ball picture here so you can imagine, there was no equipment to do this. This is all done by hand to rake all this stuff out. So this is all full of weeds. Again, one of the things we need to make sure is that we maintain the fields because if you don't maintain the fields, that exactly what happened here on R3, right, and you can pass these around, Dick, thank you, you'll see the, in, the grass grow on the infield and it becomes more of a maintenance issue. Now, one of the things they did, which was a, a great news story here, is they bought a tiller. It's $1,800 out of pocket from Little League, no cost to the town at all. And what they were able to do is take the before pictures of all the grass on the infield for R3 and clear it all out. And again, make that available to the town residents. Again, about $11,000, now $500 of rental fees. Uh, that's comparable to 2019. So a good news story, again, bringing in uh, the revenue. Um, we've also purchased some of the drying agent as well as some of the conditioner for the fields. It looks like you're probably going to underrun your budget probably a little bit because it doesn't look like you need some of the clay or as much clay as we needed last time. Um, what we'd like to be able to do is one of the things we wanted to talk about is we have not signed the contract yet for the Little League stipend and that's one of the things we wanted to talk about today. Um, again, I would like to have this in a resolution on, on Monday night, again with, with the board's approval to do this, but I think it's a, it's a good thing that we continue with a, at least a minimum of the $6,000 stipend. Again, all the work that they do, the revenue that they bring in, and again, that's not part of the contract, all the work they do on the fields here. That's above and beyond. The, the tiller is above and beyond, so they've done a significant amount of, of uh, work here. Revenue is not going to be as good as you can imagine last year because they can't sell hamburgers, hot dogs, things like that, so it has to be sodas, all things that are kind of packaged today, so their revenue is going to be down. But Again, they're pretty much maintaining, and I'll let Jeff talk to this in a moment, almost a pretty much a full kind of schedule as they did last year. Not 100% the same, again, because of the timing, but uh, a little bit uh, different. 
Uh, they do need repairs on things like fences, bleachers, number of pictures out there. I know Steve was working on getting some sanitizer dispensers out there for the women's and ladies' room. I'm not sure if that's up yet, uh, but that's things that we're looking at doing. Again, trying to make this as safe uh, as we possibly can for the, for the players. We do have money in some of our budget lines, and I'll go into those more into uh, Monday night as we talk about this, but there are some monies out there in addition to the 6K stipend that are specifically for Robinson Lane repairs, things like that, um, that we should be taking a look at. And again, we want to make sure that the fields are safe, and I think Jeff and his team do a, a great job making sure the fields are safe uh, to the best that they can. But there are a lot of fence repairs that need to be done. Um, we can show you pictures, and I'm sure all of you have been out there before, take a look at some of the conditions of the, of the fences. Again, what we want to do is, if there's budget lines for it, that's great. If we can use some parkland trust fund, um, trust fund money like we did for the, the um, security fence or safety fence we put up around Robinson Lane, we approved about two weeks ago. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but it's something I think we can do to help try to improve uh, the conditions of the field. Again, they do a phenomenal job out there uh, maintaining uh, all the fields. And again, um, that's what I'm kind of looking at. And I don't know, Jeff, you want to add anything to it? You can come up to the microphone. Um, first, let me just point out that, that tiller uh, that Al mentioned. The, the funds for that did not come out of our general fund. Um, it came out of the field improvement project, uh, which was all donated money. Uh, I sent out over 500 letters uh, about a year ago. Um, that is what paid for the scoreboards that are out there. Um, there's still money there. We purchased uh, this thing called Jock's Box to put on SL1. Uh, it goes under the dirt. It, the theory behind it is it prevents the holes being dug at, at the plate. Um, we have not got to put that in yet. It's sitting behind the garages. Um, but if it works, our plan was to put it on F3 and also R2, which are the three fields that have the scoreboards. Um, as far as the stipend, it should at least be what it has been. Personally, it should be back to pre-Barbara Gutzler era levels. Um, she gutted us a while ago. It came back up a little bit, and I know I have been told in the past over the years that, oh, you're going to get a little more, you're going to get a little more, and it's, it, it really hasn't happened. What was the, uh, what you're referring to? Yeah, it was $10,000 before Barbara. For every year? Every year, yes. I'm not sure that's accurate. Yeah. I've been here. Okay, well, it was. Yeah, it was. It was $10,000 a year. Yes. Every year? Yes. And then it was decreased when 2008 2009 or to give you the exact number i know it was barbara gutsley that did it because shortly after that the president at the time let everybody know at opening day what she did and that started that whole back and forth between okay. barbara and chris young okay yeah That's they cut it down to about three thousand dollars bill so it went from 10 all of a sudden it dropped to three and then eventually we and got it, it up to it, six it took time to get up to the sixth level um a little history before, well, before I get to that, those pictures, um, if we didn't have that tiller, that would have taken several weeks. Um, in the past, prior to that Sunday, all of that work had to be done by hand with hand tools to get weeds out. And we had to do the mound that way because we couldn't put the tiller on that. And you can ask Al, who was there, what kind of backbreaking work that is just on that little area. And while I'm on a subject, I want to thank Al um, he came out for four hours and did not look around and just sit, sit around and watch us work. He was out there with tools and everything else helping us work. I do appreciate that. You're welcome. And I also appreciate you weren't looking for a photo op because you didn't ask for any pictures of you with us or anybody, <laughs> or anybody else. Um, little history in the last couple of years of what Little League has done out there above and beyond. Um, you guys had approved Fixing, I know you had a resolution to, uh, and you approved the funds to fix the um, bleachers. Thank you. Um, not the fencing. We've been asking for the fencing for years, and nothing's been done. Um, the, the bleachers, you guys approved it. Uh, we got a, we won a, I guess you could call it a grant from Lowe's. Um, they came out about a year and a half ago 
and fixed all of those bleachers out there and you didn't have to wind up spending a dime even though you had approved the money. They fixed them all. They replaced the roof on T-Ball 2 that had blown off in a storm at the time that we had had and the whole roof came off. They fixed the whole roof for free. Um, they painted the bleachers. They painted some of the dugouts. They didn't get to all of them. Um, they, they gave us the paint they had left over. They gave us the garbage. They were really great. I, I want to thank them uh, for doing that. Um, I put a second coat because honestly it was workers and I went over and looked and I could see where the paint wasn't great. I personally re put a second coat of paint on every single bleacher out there by myself. Um, at this point, we painted the rest of every building that's out there. Uh, Sunday, while we were working on the field, I had the third base dugout on Holt painted. It was the only gray one out there. They're all now the same color. They've all been painted. Um, the scoreboards, we raised, as I mentioned earlier, we raised all of that money ourselves. Not a dime came from the town. They didn't have to spend anything. Uh, the, if you go out there and you see the poles that they're affixed to, we had somebody donate those to us. There's six of them, and they would have cost us over $1,000 each. We had somebody come out and pour the concrete for us and did it all for free. Again, no cost to the town. Um, these, the fields that we work on, we're not obligated to, fi to, to fix those fields that we're not using. We take pride in how that looks out there. If there's a change to the stipend, other than increasing it, they're all volunteers. Not, not one of us gets paid a dime for doing this. I know the people out there, it's always the same people that come out and work on the fields. And if something happens to the stipend, they're not going to come out. Because why would they go out and bust their back fixing a field so you can rent it and make money while you cut our funding? Sir, let me stop you for a second. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm sensing there's a lot of frustration here. Oh, yeah. What, what is, what's the issue? I'm... Well, one, I was watching when you said, why are we giving Little League money? Okay. First of all, let's clarify that. We have a contract in place with Little League that's not in place right now. We have an obligation to have a contract in place before we pay any stipend. And then there's certain responsibilities within the contract for each party. Right. My understanding was that Little League maintained the infields. That's what I've, I've been here the longest, and that's what I've been told. If you read, the, if you read in the contract, it says that Little League will assist the town in maintaining the fields. For as long as I've been here, sir, Little League has maintained the infields. Yes, we, we do. Okay, so. But we're not, it, it's, it says we're supposed to assist you, okay? Steve, is that true? We're supposed to be maintaining the infields, or? You want to see it? No, I'm just asking the director of Billings and Grounds, because we need to clarify these things in order to understand what our obligation is, because I've been here for five different administrations, and I'll be honest with you, my impression and understanding, and Paoloni was here as a councilman as well, was that Little League maintained the, the fields. We do the outside. Is that not true, Steve? Yeah, his mowing. Historically, um, Little League has been maintaining infields. We do outfields and common areas. Right. Yeah, we mow the infields. Right. So what I'm, you're talking about is you guys mow the outfield. You're supposed to, we're supposed to assist you in maintaining the fields. Okay. All right. At one time, we used every field out there. We no longer use every field out there, but you rent them out. Okay. So, I mean, if you think that it's okay that you have free labor out there. I don't know why, where are you getting these, where are you getting these implications from? Well, I, I'm really confused why you're speaking to the town board like this. I, I really am. This is really more directed at you. It's directed at me? Yeah. Okay. Why, why would it be no, directed not, at me? Uh, clearly you're not familiar with my no, history with Little League. No, I, I, I was not happy with the comments. I, not happy with what comments? Maybe, from the board meeting Look, where you yeah, asked let's, let's maybe focus. I, maybe, I, you know, it's inappropriate to be accusing uh, someone here. Sir, perhaps you should do Otherwise some research it's going and see what, what it's going to go downhill. Maybe I, have, maybe I misinterpreted what I heard, okay? Okay. But that did bother me. 
it just bothers you that we're not paying you a stipend because we don't have a contract signed yet? I don't have an objection to paying okay. you a stipend. I did, not re I did not read it the way that you're describing okay. it. But you're right coming now. into the town board meeting here on a Saturday morning. We've all given up here to be productive to, first of all, uh, take a tone that to me is right. totally disrespectful, okay? Number two, to make implications that we don't care about your program. I didn't say, I didn't that's, say that's, that's, that's I didn't what I'm hearing. Okay, so okay. Let, let's 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 calm down now because this out, is this I is. I was out there for four hours working. We're, we're, okay, we're, we're, what are you trying to say? Was I supposed to be out there too, sir? Because no, we've no, no, all no, been no, out no. there, Jeff. And I, 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 I don't go know out if you're familiar, sir. Things, so. So, I would I would recommend that before before you make statements that I you don't like my tone or the way I have uh, responded to something at a town board meeting. Look at the last 14 years, okay, and look at the hundreds of thousands of dollars that I have spearheaded to go towards that property out there, okay? Because clearly you, you're not familiar with that. Okay. I'm frustrated with the fact that a couple of things, okay? The fencing okay. has come up a hundred times, okay? okay? We keep talking about it, right. and nothing ever gets done, all right? Last March, I was out there with Steve. Um, that, uh, with the reason I was there was the stupid Raven nest in, in the pavilion. One of your guys went down to look at the R3 dugouts. Okay. I happened to be standing there when he came back and told Steve, those things are unsafe. They need to be taken down. One of our, who, one of our guys, who? Steve. Steve. Remember yeah. the guy that went down and you sent him down uh, to look at the dugout? And, and Steve has reported or the condition of the ball fields, everything to the board. We had a long list. You know, he reported on the condition of the dugouts and right. recommended it. Then we go into lockdown for three months. And so we're having this meeting today, Jeff, to try right. to have a constructive approach to figure out what then, needs to be done and priorities. We don't need to go into history. No, we have to look last, forward. This was last March. Y yes, I know. Then we were in lockdown. three months locked down. No, 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 no. Since March. Not this March. Yeah, I know. 2019. And, and Steve has reported to the board, and we've been addressing the issues. Okay? And here's what's happened, what happened back then so, okay. with the travel teams. Mm -hmm. I told Steve I would put some barrier tape up so that they wouldn't go in there after I heard him, that his guy say that they weren't safe. I put it up. And every time the travel team come, they'd rip it down and go in there. I, went, I finally went down there and I told the guys, I said, this is not safe for you to use. You keep tearing down that barrier tape. If somebody gets hurt, I said, I will testify for the town that I told you that wasn't safe and you used the damn thing anyway. This is the first thought. I mean, the town board generally is not involved in these types of issues. Steve, are you familiar with this? I am. Um, <clears throat> the uh, concrete floor has shoved from frost, and there's uh, about a five inch lip between where it has broken. Um, it's a tripping hazard. Um, we intended to tear the thing down, but every time you know, we're scheduled to go out there and do something, we have something else in town that is more urgent come up. But uh, the, the, uh, we're supposed to be tearing them down until they can be rebuilt. Okay, this is not something that I was aware of. So you need to understand, sir, that every single thing that happens on that field, we're not necessarily right. familiar with. We're, we're looking at things from 30,000 feet here. And as for your funding, I have no objection to the funding, okay? What needs to be understood, though, from a, a fiduciary standpoint is we need to have a contract in place in order to uh, uh, responsibly cut the check. That's what needs to happen. So, so, send me one. so one of the things we're looking to do, and the reason we're having this discussion today is we're trying to bring forward, here's the things that they're doing today Basically, it's status quo from last year. So again, same revenue, same everything. We just haven't had time to sign the contract. We wanted to bring the rest of the board up to speed on the things that are happening here. I know you don't have an objection to the stipend. I mean, we've had this conversation later on in, in executive session, et cetera. So there's not an issue there. I think it's more of just giving you an update of where we are today, you know, from a field perspective. Uh, again, what kind of things need to still be done? What kind of things Jeff's looking for? And, and again, I think that, you know, again, they do a, a great job. And I, and I think, Bill, I know you support the lake. Uh, you, you've always supported it. You've done a number of things, approved a number of improvements here. So I don't think that's the issue. I think it's more of, you know, let's sit here. Let's work together as a team. Let's, let's get the contract signed. Let's understand what's going, you know, we're going to be doing forward. And some of the other improvements that need to be made. And that was the whole purpose of having this as a workshop item to give the board an update as to, again, where we're at, what we're looking to do. Again, now that the Little League season has started, as we, we found out, I guess, in executive session, actually, you got, I think, a text that says, oh, by the way, phase four is here. And so now we can actually get moving forward. And that's all we're trying to do. We don't want this to be confrontational. We're trying to work together as a team, Little League, town board, et cetera. So I hope nobody walks away from this, you know, being a fan. Let's work together as a team. 
let's move forward, let's get some things accomplished, and I think that's the, the purpose but, of this workshop. But I would clarify that the reason why the contract had not been, you know, a new one signed this year, we had one signed last year and previously, and as far as I'm concerned, it's still in force. But the issue is, Jeff, that we had a lack of clarity, which has become obvious this morning, as whose responsibilities are what for maintaining those grounds. It's not all on the town's shoulders. We have the same thing with respect to soccer. And so we had to clarify that. We've had the discussion, you and me and Al, we did it on behalf of the board. That's one of the things. Obviously, the stipend amount it needs to be clarified in the contract, and what does that go for? So those are some of the reasons why the contract hasn't been signed yet. If I was not clear, I was not at saying the town should take care of the infield. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying what I'm saying is the contract needs to be more clear as because we obviously have a dispute, you know, of yeah. who is to maintain things for a certain time. So all I'm saying is that to go forward, you know, in order to get the contract signed, we need to get it finalized and then have Mr. Horan review it. You know, I guess to make my, sure my it's point proper. is we are all we are out there. We're all volunteers. Our priority is going to be on the fields that we're using. We take pride in how that facility looks, okay? I was questioned, if you look at those pictures on R3, I was even questioned why we were working on that field. First, with the tiller, why weren't we doing the fields that we were using? Yeah, well, and I, my thing was- We didn't ask you. I, I said, this is embarrassing. Yeah. Look at this field. I, I think it goes back to a clear responsibility right and that needs to be included in the contract, right. that all parties are covered. And unfortunately, that doesn't exist right now, and I think that would help everybody right. going forward. I, I, I commend you and the people and Al and, and everybody because this is important to the community. This is something we all want. This, this helps everybody. So I just think it would be advantageous that, Jim, you look at the contract, make sure responsibilities are clear, and we go forward. No. And I think that would be helpful to you and to everybody. Go, especially in the future. We can't go backwards. I understand the cut that happened under Gutzler. Um, we'll try to rectify whatever we can. And, and let me just say, if, if you're looking to put all of the responsibility of maintaining every single field on us, no. we are volunteers. I, I, what we currently do, like I said, is we prioritize, okay, we have... And it's always the same people, three or four people, five maybe, that you come out pride. and help. You have pride in this. this is we, we work on the fields that, that we're using first, and then when we can get to the other ones, we get... Uh, R3 was, to me, was just embarrassing to even see. I, I was actually moving teams that you had rented that field to up onto another field because I didn't think it was even right for them to be practicing on it because the field was in such bad shape. But don't feel that this board doesn't take this serious. Our future generation is serious for all of us. Thank and we you. want them safe. And I commend everybody that was out there volunteering their time. We're all really busy. And thank you. I, I, I think sincerely thank you from all of thank us. You. But we're there to help you and to work together and, and make our community even better than it is. So thank you for- And, and again, I don't think anybody has any issues with, with the league at all. It's just, you know, just making sure we get some clarity on our responsibilities and things like that, and, that, and that's right. all it is to it. I, again, I, I, you know, I, I agree with, with Bill. He's been here the longest, and again, they've done some really good things. Well, there's other things that can be done, absolutely, and we're going to find the same things out when we talk to the soccer uh, team as well here. But again, we want to do what's in the best interest of you know the community and whatever. And we want to work together as a team. We are a team, and I understand your responsibilities. I've looked at the contract myself, um, and you know, I, I thought they were pretty clear as to what your responsible for versus what the town is. And uh, again, we'll just take a look. We'll have Jim take a look at that again. I know Jessica and Dick have both looked at the, uh, the contract as well. But I don't think anybody here is, is in disagreement that, we, again, we all support Little Lake. I mean, my kids came up through the system. I came up through the system. So we all know the work that goes out there. I've done work for when I was there for eight years working on those fields. So I know all the stuff that you do from being working on the stores, working at the fields, all that. So I understand that from a, a personal view. And, and again, I, I support it. And again, I think the entire board here does support it. When we was just, the last workshop meeting that we sat here? Um, February. February 29th. February. 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 In, just before, in yeah. February, I specifically asked for the contracts right. to be yes. looked into to identify the specific right. responsibilities. Did I not? Yeah. yeah. And that was my so, request, too. So here we are in July. Right. And 
we're having stuff the same. Right. And so, well, and I understand we're in a COVID environment yeah, now, yeah, but, but but still. And as a result, you'll recall that Al and I then did meet on behalf of the board and you know went through a list uh, of items, which right. then did get interrupted as a result of. Uh, but again, going forward, right. we can't unfortunately no, change things right. that happened in the past, and we have counsel and have him review this contract to make sure everything is clear for both parties. For all the parties. So if I may, as to the contract, um, I've been working as attorney for the town since 2006. Back in 2006 when, when I started, there was no contract in place, and the New York State Controller has opined that a, a municipality may not give money to Little League or any community programs without a contract in place that sets forth the responsibilities that that agency will undertake on behalf of the residents of the town. So Councilman Beale is saying, you know, I don't have an I don't have an objection to making the payment until a contract in, is in place, and that's because Councilman Beale has listed to council in the past. Well, that's because I was here since 2006 and was part of the audit process. Right, and and so so that's the reason for the sensitivity. The, Let me just say, I obviously misread. That. Okay. I apologize. Thank you, Councilman. It's okay. I mi I misread that whole thing, and now even. Him it's telling fine. me this here is giving I, I don't more, take any, more light. I don't take anything personal, so you're lucky. Right. <laughs> uh, but, but let me just clarify one thing. Uh, there is one common denominator that occurs from administration to administration, which leads to frustration from third parties, which is miscommunication, uh, which does occur, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. In order to try to prevent miscommunication, um, I've tried to be as specific as possible within the stipulations in the contract so we know, okay, this is Little League's responsibility. This is the town's responsibility. I mean, this is kind of deja vu to me. I went through this with Scott Dinas, God knows how many years ago, where we went through the same conversation out on the field, and it was probably more heated. Uh, and now, now we're best of both. I, I don't so, <laughs> so um, you, perhaps you can you can envision what that looked like. Yes, I can. Uh, but and Steve, you remember that. So I don't want to go in circles, <laughs> which happens. Okay, I want to make sure we're making progress as the right. councilman from the fourth ward is trying to do. Uh, I do see some good content here in these. Uh, in these uh, sub uh, paragraphs here, which I think uh, do identify specific responsibilities. And we amended that last year in so order to try to do all that. All we need, in my opinion, is a contract on our dais to approve. I don't have an objection to uh, supporting the current uh, uh, subsidy, and I also don't have an objection to discussing additional funding. Right. Okay? I just need to have it on paper so that I can go yeah. back to people that ask me about it and say, look, this is exactly what our responsibility is, this is what Little League's responsibility is. Based on the pictures that I saw today, this morning, uh, you know that's a heck of a lot more than six thousand dollars in value. Okay, the time and effort of your volunteers and the work uh, that you've done on those fields clearly uh, justifies uh, a subsidy. I also would uh, argue uh, with the uh, councilman from the fourth ward that uh, some capital project support would be uh, warranted as well. Right. So uh, we just have to make sure we do this in a way that is uh, organized. And it's just been a challenge here since since March 8th because uh, we've had to deal with this other issue. So, understood. That's where I'm at. So we have work that has to be done to address all the concerns, and hopefully we'll go forward in a positive I, way. I do have one last thing for you guys to consider. Um, while I appreciate the, the, how quickly the speed bumps got put in out there, they're really, 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 really low, which means well, after the first time of those. The men's league and the travel team was driving in there, and they realized they could just don't really have to slow down. They only work the first time they go over them. So, you know, if you look at those speed bumps at like uh, over at Home Depot in that parking lot, you can't go fast over those things. So, you know, we, we actually had another incident with somebody speeding in there, and one of my coaches yelling, "Slow down!" And a guy got out of the car and started cursing him out. So it, it happens a lot. That's all I have. Mr. Horan, since, you know, we had reviewed this, you know, thoroughly back last year, yes. actually the end of 2018 and 19 to get this in, Jessica, you and I, and had made some amendments. I think there were some minor changes, but is it possible for you to look at this this weekend, sure. Monday, so Absolutely. on the board meeting on Monday night, we can 
Because I have, as you've seen on the agenda, a placeholder for anything coming out of this meeting, right? Yeah, so like then we can do that. I agree. I'd like to get right. the contract. I'd like to get the, the contract signed Monday, if possible. This for the board? Yeah, Please, sure. And, and distribute it to the board. You know. Yeah, that's meeting. what the intention is. And just for clarification, um, because of uh, COVID, the Little League schedule now started July 7th, or how does that Eighth. work now? Yeah, we, had, we were, well, we were going to start on the 6th, but then we had a little issue with the umpires uh, because we're like in the middle of travel ball and those organizations are all cramming everything in so okay. they don't have to refund any money. Right. So weekends were going to be an issue, so we kind of had to mm -hmm. finagle the, the schedule a little bit. So Wednesday was the first game um, we're running um, it, through September. Okay. All right, so I mean, and we're, I'm sorry, but we're so, so all I was going to say, just not to cut you off, is the service is being provided above and beyond after seeing these photos. So there's no question uh, that there's uh, right. uh, justification Great. for uh, for it, the subsidy to continue. Obviously, we'll have the contract hopefully on our table uh, on on Monday, and then we can move forward and cut the check. Yeah, that's been my argument all along. I mean, we're they're doing the work, and it would have cost a lot more if you had to vendor it out, et cetera. It's all volunteer work here, so. Again, you know, six thousand dollars is not a lot of money considering. And oh, by the way, Bill, the other thing too is they bring in over eleven thousand dollars worth of revenue into the A fund. Yeah, and that's something we need to talk about in September when we're doing budget. Uh, I think we need to perhaps rebalance, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the expenses we focus toward versus right. the, re the revenues that are coming in. So we need to do a little bit of a rebalancing there. I don't have an objection to that. And that's what I was hoping to do. And. When we start the budget year, process. The revenues are going to be down, unfortunately, this year. <clears throat> yes, and I was although, although Little League revenue is not down year to year. No. Yes, no, they're, they're not. No, down. I, I got it overall. Okay. This year is not a good year for any of us, so it's going to be down, and we need to be conscious of that. And I, I was in the concession stand yesterday, and the, uh, the, the big freezer we have was beeping because the seal is no longer any good. So we either got to pay somebody to fix that or, or try Probably and know. I think we should ask Lowe's. <laughs> Let's call those and see. Well, I was told uh, by our treasurer that actually that last one was Home Depot. They they sold it to us for like hundred dollars as kind of a mini donation towards Little League, however many years ago it was. So, Steve, you wanted to yeah, I, I just wanted to give the board a, a point of reference. If my department were to assume the work that the Little League organization is doing now on the infields, I would need to assign two men at that field all week long throughout their playing season. And I just looked at my budget. That would amount to just over $40,000 in payroll alone. Um, the, amount, the work that they do for the town is, is very significant. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. So we can go back to the original, <laughs> the pre-Barbara Gutzler stipend then, right? <laughs> um, I guess right. I just have one question, because um, yes. the issue had, had come up regarding um, cell service and, and utility connections do you do you know ha, has anyone in Little League had any experience with the, the underground conduits for the utilities that are going out there I don't believe so okay so I know you were going to talk to Roger Connor Jim. yeah I spoke to Roger about it because we're trying we're trying to run a, a line from the end of Robinson Lane through the conduit so you get cell service out there because I'm worried about Challenger Field as well and so I've talked to Jim and Dick about that as, as well, trying to see is there a way to, to do that with, along with Roger Connor right. from Altice. And um, I don't know if you've had any success on that, Jim, or not, but. Uh, no, we spoke to Ron. I mean, ultimately the question was, is there any room in the, in the conduit that's there to pull a cable? Sorry. I'm not familiar with the layout. Um, okay. I am aware that there is an existing phone line right. that goes to the concession stand. Whether that could be utilized or not, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, because I, I was, that's what I was looking at. That's what right. struck that me. Would I, be a, I mean, that would be a great help, too, because, you know, we, sometimes we have, well, obviously not this year, but in the past we've had to turn people away because they didn't have cash, and they're right. like, well, we have no cell service, right. so we can't. No, we've been working with Altice on trying to get that. I mean, so that's said, where this came up. Basically, what they said was if, you know, if there's a conduit kind they could pull yeah. a cable to, they'd be willing to do that. Um, yeah. You know, it's yeah. just that the cost I, of I'm trying to get them to do it as a community or, service, right. free service to, to run the line. Um, so but I've the, talked to, again, all a couple the, times the now. The utilities out there are buried. So. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Okay. Is that anything for me? 
No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no. Thanks, Jeff, for coming. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. I guess one well, one question. I don't know if it's discussed. Because it's not in here regarding scheduling of the fields between the different organizations. Do you coordinate that? Yeah, okay. Jessica yeah. coordinates. So the, yeah. the way that we handle it is um, there are three fields that Little League has exclusive use of through the season, and then the other field four. SL one. One or yeah. one or two F three. Yes. Yep. I have a list. Sorry. Um, and then the rest of them are available for booking uh, through our website. And boy, has there been a lot of that. So those fields. And you can ask Jessica. I mean, in the past, yeah. when somebody needed something and things were kind of booked up, we've worked to where I'm like, okay, I can do this, move this here, you right. can use this field. Yeah. I was I was on the phone with Jimmy this morning, so we're literally we're doing that today. <laughs> Real time. Yeah. Yep. So it's you know all okay. settled though. And how many total fields are out there? Excuse me? How many total fields are out there? 13, right? I thought it was 14. I, it's around that. Yeah, okay. 13, 14. 13, 12, 13, yeah 14, it's in that area. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jim, I do have one more question for you. Sorry, to, we're going kind of no. long on the little league. But um, so we, there's some uh, signs out there or sponsorships out on, I guess it's Holt Field. And Wampanoag Yankees used to use that field, but um, we had talked about this a while ago. If they were able to obtain some of the sponsorships out there, because I guess Roland used to collect a, a fee for that you know, sponsorship, whatever you want to call that, right. can they legally still do that if they were able to? Because the signs are still out there. Are they legally allowed to still collect those funds? Uh, it's it's a little bit so. As a general rule, towns are not permitted to advertise on park facilities. Um, however, you know you can have sponsorships for, you know, rec you can make recognition of contributions in kind, things like that. Okay. Um, you know, supportive programs. Um, so, advert selling advertising per se um, is not necessarily permitted by the New York State Control prior New York State control opinion in cases. Um, however, the cases from, the case on point is from 1918 and I believe refers to advertising for whiskey and cigars. Um, so, um, you know, so the, the, the case is limited in that respect. So, you know, sponsor, again, Little League gets sponsorship from, you know, various um, business organizations to support teams, you know, to the extent that they're gonna, you know, I'm just thinking like a Lowe's or a Home Depot or somebody. Again, maybe they well, maybe do something yeah. like that, or if they want to donate well, they, or whatever. We've done some of that because of the signs. You know, when we got the bank, you know, to donate and you know, so. F3 has a I think, yeah. shop right. Yeah. Okay. I don't, okay. Remember, I don't really remember what that was. Right. Why that was put up. And or or like that. Yeah. You know, like I said, it, it's uh, what. What the case law basically s says is, you know, it, it's not permissible to you know, ha put a billboard out in, in in a park that says, you know, buy Coke, or well, I, it's a bad example because you're selling it there, and you know, you can use it for product product advertising, but it's Pepsi. you know, so um, <laughs> or Pepsi, but so so um, I mean, so those type of things are, but uh, you know, it it can't be a billboard. Per se is basically what the case law holds. And with the dissolution of the Wappingers Yankees organization, Roland did say he's willing to let you guys keep whatever's out there and, and form your own arrangement with the people that have stuff out there. So I don't hold. So. I don't even know if he collected, kept, was still collecting no, I don't know. years. I mean, those things have been up forever. Ever, yeah. Okay. But they're all yours now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Any other questions okay. for us? Tom, do you want to report, since we're on baseball and softball and those topics, do you want to report on the Challenger League and you know, the restroom facilities, please? So we recently acquired health department approval for the septic system for the new restroom for the Challenger field. Um, we, our next step would be to seek authorization from the town board to go out to bid. Um, this project has a estimate of around a little over 200,000 for the overall project and has a community development block grant for I believe 92,000. 92,000 and Steve owes us the remainder from when he sold the old <laughs> restroom facilities. 
Um, so in, in an ideal world, we could obtain approval to go out to bid on this. And ideally, there's a good amount of fill associated with the septic pad and the building pad. Ideally, we could get that fill put in place this fall to get it to settle over the winter and then put the precast building on site and finish up the septic system in the spring. If um, it's a function. Well, I think, you know, just as we've discussed with Spook Hill, we need to make sure that we communicate with Ann Saylor to understand what do we have to do with respect to that community block grant. Absolutely. Money, so right? That. And, uh, you know, do we have to act? You know, and that's, again, a cost reimbursement basis, right? Or is that's that, correct. Yeah, right? That's a reimbursement. So right. we need to make sure we understand that quickly, just like with Spook Hill. So does right. that have an expiration date on it? Well, I don't have the paperwork on that, but I'll, that's going to be one of the There was no specific expiration, but usually they're looking at it within a year or so to start activity, but they know that we've been waiting for approval on the septic and some of that. But and I with COVID, the whole thing is a little leeway, too. Read, yeah, but also county monies have been delayed or deferred, I guess, Bill is probably the correct word in, in some of these cases. So Just on hold. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we need to make sure we do that. Just a challenge is right. Okay. And when do you know when they complete? When they're done? No, he's still kind of working okay. things out with that group because obviously there's more concerns for them with right. COVID and everything else. So he's trying to pick the right time, the right days, and all that stuff. So. And Lagrange Challenger is going to be out there this year again as well, so we'll be making use of it. So with respect to, Le I was going to ask this, Jessica, is the Grange Challenger part of Challenger, which is in here, or do we have to have a separate arrangement with the Grange Challenger? The Grange Challenger, they rent, rent the fields from us the same way that a travel team oh, okay. would, but we do not charge them the field rentals as the program or as the field was completed through a county grant and, and things like that. We want it to get used as much as possible. So. LaGrange Challenger uses it on a per use arrangement and they do not get charged a fee. But what about, and this may be more appropriate for Jim, what about when we're doing upgrades of the facilities, should we not perhaps charge something? You know, again, if we're not charging a field fee, but a use fee and because of the use of the facilities. I'm just asking a question, not yeah, saying that we do that. I, you know, I don't know with respect to if there were any conditions on the no. grant funding because um, that was originally under a community development block grant. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not aware of any under the general C, CDBG program. I'm not aware of any restrictions that you can't charge funding or ch can't charge fees, um, f you know, for use. Um, you know, I don't you know whether they, I don't know the, the structure of the finances of, of you know, the organization right. as well, so. Okay. Um, but, you know, um, it, I'll, I'll, I'll see. Yeah, let's look into it and just see what. You know, because ultimately the money comes through a federal pro the right. community development block grant pr program comes from the um, ha uh, housing education and development. Right. Uh, housing and urban development federal program, and it's administered right. by the county, but. Right. The, the ultimate source of that funding. Is and it has specific requirements why we were able right. to get it for there in Spook Kills because the ADA and right. you know, that uh, yeah, type so there's, of issue. There's limited, so. I'll look in the, right. the guidance to see if there's a limitation on charging fees. Uh, Tom, is the design, you know, the building been finalized, uh, including the ramp? We had discussion before when Mike was here, you know, about, you know, the ramp and the position. Is all that design work done now? Well, um, I, I don't have it detailed yet. When we've got okay. authorization to go out to bid, we'll get more details on the ramp. But the concept right now is, um, I mean, because of the nature that this is all in a floodplain, right. the, the building itself has to be elevated above the floodplain. Correct. Um, we have a precast building, which I can show you in a second, but basically we've got to get um, a handicap ramp, which is going to be concrete with the proper landings and all the proper slopes and railings and everything railings else stuff, yeah. up to the sidewalk at the building. Um, and then we were showing a set of stairs so that people that don't need to use the ramp can use a set of stairs. Right. Um, I'll move over to the building plan. 
So this is a precast building that'll come pretty much furnished. Um, they've and recently- And you addressed the uh, changing tables, the dog changing yep. tables, right? Yep. Oops. Um, let me just get this rotated. Um, recently, Steve asked that there's a, there's a need for a um, utility room uh, in the middle of this building for things like the water heater and whatnot. And that we move the doorway to the back so that wouldn't be visible. So I almost got it up so you can see it now. And this is pretty much the same idea of the precast building with the, uh, the stone veneer. And you've got your two restroom areas and then here's the floor plan where they're pretty much mirror images of the same floor plan. This circle in the middle is the circle we need to meet the ADA requirements for turning around wheelchairs and whatnot. And then there's adult changing tables on the outside walls here that fold up against the wall. Right. And the storage room is in the middle. Well, it's a more of a uh, it's a small room. It's barely right. three feet wide, mainly okay. for the electrical panel and the water okay. heater. So now there was also a Steve uh, request with respect to, and I, I know we also have it for soccer. You know, with respect to a storage room for bats and various. Uh, Items is right. We have a, a storage shed available for them once the pad is built. Okay, that's already been purchased. Good. Okay, and that's that's on the on the fill pad right. adjacent to the building. So okay, we incorporate that the okay. location of that shed into the design. So right. that puts that, it up out of the floodplain then. So yep. the storage shed is the one that's been out there that it's at, sitting actually at the vendor, and all we need to do is have it delivered. Right, so it's yeah. fully paid for. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. with last year's money. So, I mean, th that's where we're at. The next step would be getting authorization from the town board to go out to bid and get the actual bid amounts, which could change. You know, our estimates are probable costs, and uh, in this environment, anything could happen with the cost. But so to go out for bid, we need to allocate monies, you know, beyond the CDBG grant, correct? correct. Up and, to 200000 you're saying? And in order to cover the CDBG grant as right. well. Because yeah, of because that's cost reimbursement. So is that uh, uh, you know a, a, a you know a, a trust fund you know uh, issue? Parkland Trust Parkland Trust yeah uh, Tom or Bill or is that uh, for be. that amount of money? How much is part, half of it will be reimbursed. It's hundred thousand dollars. Well, it's actually two hundred thousand you got to ask for, but you get reimbursed for ninety two. So right. it's really about one hundred and eight hundred and ten thousand that we would have to take out of Parkland Trust. And I think you guys. Last time, board, I think you probably allocated the full two hundred thousand. At least you spoke about a two hundred thousand dollar number. We, we spoke about we that. Spoke yeah. About yeah. yeah. Frederick, you know, we still have what six hundred thirty-five thousand, or approximately, in Parkland Trust. Yeah, about six hundred thirty-five. That's probably the direction to move in. Yeah. If we have money left over at the end of the year. Perhaps we can have a conversation about general fund uh, assistance, right. but I'm not sure based on the uh, fiscal environment how that's going to look. Right. Right. And by the way, just to just to clear the uh, and set the record straight here, those numbers were inaccurate. The little league uh, subsidy was not ten thousand dollars after two thousand six. I just I just researched this mm -hmm. entire thing. I've been here since two thousand seven. From two thousand seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, it was eight thousand dollars. In 2013 and 14, it was $5,000. I'm the reason why it went up to $6,000. I have no objection to supporting that subsidy, and then we can discuss what we need to do moving forward. But let's make sure we have accurate information right. before we come in here and make statements that are inaccurate. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Okay, let's let's stop. Okay. Let's move on. Let's, let's, okay, let's move, let's move on. on. So, so this you know. is at 200 200 k, yeah. right? Right. Parkland has how much? Six thirty five. Okay. Yeah. So you know, you know, Jim, again, contract Monday. You know, sure. And yep. make sure that from the Challenger League, anything that we might need to fine tune with respect to this you know, aspect of it, right. and cost reimbursement or what have you, and then. 
we can be prepared. You can prepare a resolution for us on Monday to approve contract. We'll finalize our discussion then with respect to the subsidization amount. Uh, and also, I'd like to, you know, in the context too of, of soccer or anything else, we have to consider. And then, Tom, uh, you, you know, Tim, whoever on Monday just has a final, you know, proposal that you can email to the board members. You know, so we'll have that package so we can get moving on that. And then uh, you and I can talk about, uh, you know, talking with Ann Saylor about just getting clarity. We may not have that for Monday, but just the process going forward. So. Uh I guess the one thing that I, I see regarding the field usage um, in the contract, it says the parties acknowledge that lights for night games have been installed at the following three fields. Are those the three fields that Little League uses? Uh, Hope Memorial, Senior League Field 1, and Melissa Bissa um, The Hope field we don't really use anymore. Okay. Just the men's league use that. Yeah. Um, SL1. Okay. And the girls play on that F3. And so what's the third field you guys use? There's three the scoreboards. Third field, yeah, the third field with lights is Holt. They don't use we Holt. Don't really no. use, yeah, there's the three fields. The Holt one we don't really use. Okay. Anymore. And so what's the third field you use? F, F3. There's three fields that have lights. No, I'm that, 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 oh, that's just in what, what does Little League use as far as the exclusionary you know, right. field? Can we have a listing of what fields are yeah. used with the right. names? Well, the full, so all the fields. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's discrepancy about Well, I guess that's my question is, yeah. is you know, let's, you know let's there, was a, there was a discussion clear. before right. about in this which fields aren't being used, which fields are, are, are being used. And I think to clarify that issue, I think it'd be helpful in the contract right. if we exactly. list what fields are being used by Little League exclusively. Um, right. Oh, let's to, make it very clear. Yeah, that's, that's an issue. I, I understand that question. That's, right. Yeah, yeah that one F3, we got. <laughs> F3, R1, right. R2, SL. Okay. Let's put that in the contract uh, yeah. so it's clear, it's so there's no questions. What's being used, what's not right. being used, please? Believe me, I would love Thanks. that for you to go back and use every single thing. Well, we would too. We hope that that's, as, as you grow the, the participation, we do hope that as well. Uh, but you raised a good point, which I had on the list, but I forgot to bring it, you know, is lighting. You know, Steve, uh, that's costing us $50,000 a year, I think, uh, something like that with respect to those old outdated lights. Uh, we were going to check with, or, or I think we had talked about, I don't know if we had agreed on checking with Central Hudson about uh, some sort of program to get, you had looked into it as to the lighting. Right. Um, we had been spending, on a full season, we spend in the area $50,000 yeah. in electricity. Those are sodium vapor uh, lights that are up there. Um, they were the most efficient light available, but not today. Today, LED is the most efficient. Um, I had looked into doing a conversion of those lights to LED lights and the cost was $750,000. Um, but we were hoping perhaps to talk with Central Hudson right. to see if uh, we could get something. They don't have any okay. um, programs available for that type of lighting. Um, building lighting, you know, outdoor building lighting, yes, but not uh, field lighting like that. Uh, you, you guys, I think CPL was going to look into some possible grant. You know, I, that was something I think I discussed with Tim, so you can... Yeah. Double check with him. Yeah, we, we met with Musco Lighting. They gave okay. us a couple of links to grant opportunities, and, and very few of them were 100% um, grants. A lot of them were matching grants and things like that. Right. And this is a significant cost to only get half of it. No. Yeah, right, and I had done, they had given me a, uh, a percentage on the cost savings for electricity, and I had run the numbers, and you're looking at a 17 and a half year uh, return on investment. Right. Um, you know, for doing that. that. That's a long time. It is a long time. I think 50000 is higher than the accurate, the actual for the lighting out there. I don't think it's 50000 Well, I, I sign the no. vouchers every month. Yeah, I think it's 50000 Bill. Because, well, because let's go back to the beginning of the lighted field, all right? The genesis of the lighted field selling the ads was, was to pay for, to offset the cost of the lighting. Mm. That's what it was. That's how that started. And uh, they were no way generating fifty thousand dollars in revenue. No. I, my understanding was it was closer to thirty thousand uh, dollars, unless it's unless it's gone up considerably because we put additional lighting up. 
That's, that sounds like a lot of money for uh, electricity out there. Did you say at one time to me that uh, somebody did, that they charge you a monthly fee just to have the lights? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes. There's a monthly fee on each meter out there. Yeah. And that fee is based on the amount of electricity that flows through the meter at peak. So, you know, a higher demand meter is a, a higher monthly cost. And they're putting it at the f highest demand cost, right? You know, Steve, I don't think we get any benefit. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe they're on clocks. No. And, you know, and I don't think we get, you know, because we're, we're still using it during pre peak periods. Right. Yeah, but we, we should I see think. a significant savings this year, though, because we haven't had any programs. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, I didn't, I wasn't quoting this year's. No, no, no. Frederick, could you, could you do me a favor and put together a breakout of the actual costs from last year? at Robinson Lane for electricity, just so we can get a, uh, uh, you know, a, a standard line right. of where, to, where we need to look. I mean, this year obviously is going to be an exception, but it seems to me that $50,000 a year for lighting out there is, is way more than we previously have discussed. Do, Steve, so, do you know how many meters are out there? Well, that's why I looked into it before, Bill, and yeah. that's what they came up with, I think, both I, Jessica and Steve. So that's why I said the same thing. That seemed awful out. Does the building have a separate from uh, Something that I did, um, I talked about Dick, or talked with Dick about doing it um, two years ago was our field rental price for using the fields with lights is $250, which is about $100 higher than the average municipality. So I, I got permission to, since everything pulled together, we don't know who's using the lights through Little League, and then we do know who's using it for our rentals. So I literally went out there and turned one field's lights on for three hours, read the meter before, read the meter after, did the math. It's very close to actually being $250 per three hour block that we're paying in electricity for the lights on those fields. So I wouldn't be surprised that over an entire season we would be talking about $50,000. Um, you also take into account that the Yankees Folks yeah. told you they never use the lights. Yeah. They turn them on every single time they play. Yeah. So yeah. You'll have, you won't have that. We don't have that now. Yeah, we don't have that issue anymore. We won't have that uh, situation. By the way, but we'll get with Frederick in your yeah. report to us on Monday. You can include that along with some of the other numbers. But it, it is surprisingly accurate. I swore when I went out there it was going to be exciting and I was going to get to tell everyone we could reduce the price. And no, no, we're right on. Right Do we have timers in all the fields so that we can turn them on and turn them off so that, you know, they go no. on at 7 and so they go off at 10? Good point, because these lights stay on even if nobody's playing. No, no, I go out there and shut them off. Who does? I do. Jessica. I had There's looked no into... The no. There's no way you can regulate it besides you going physically to shut the lights off. None of our fields. There is. There is uh, a that's something I had looked into. Right. I had looked into an automated switching system. The initial cost would have been in the between three and five thousand dollars. The the hang up is that we need internet service out yeah. there to so operate it. Yeah. <laughs> and it can actually, if it's the, uh, one of the the brands that you said, I'm sorry if I don't remember it. They can actually integrate with our recreation reservation system right. and do it based purely on the reservations that are in the books. So. Yeah, when Steve awesome. looked at it, I, I think, yeah. thought that was money to be well spent, but we Absolutely. were waiting for the internet, you know, issue to get yeah. resolved. So. I could turn my lights on on my front porch right now from sitting here, and I can open <laughs> yes, my garage, yeah. yes. but we can't turn the lights off. No. But, but you have internet, sir. But you have internet service. Well, there's an optimum hotspot right there at the end of uh, I know. Rockwell Lake. I, I, I know. The problem yeah. is they got to run the wire to the conduit. It's, it's if it's $50,000 a year, which everyone seems to uh, be making that argument, um, Obviously, we just need to do our best to uh, have, you know, provide for accountability. I mean, that, that's a, that's a yeah. significant expense. Significant. Mm -hmm. It's about a half of our total expense that the town's putting out there because the rest of Steve is materials and manpower and time, you know, for cutting and so forth. So, you know, that's, you know, and again, I'm not saying that, you know, negatively, but that's, that's a huge this amount is, of money. This is not all year. This no. is only yeah. used, what, right. three months out of the year? And it's about March to October. But still. Yeah. That's it's light out until 9.30 at year, night. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> so this is uh, something that definitely has to be looked at and addressed to see what we can do to bring this cost right. down. I agree. Still got timers to, to 
And thank you, Steve, for looking at that. Light timers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been broken for several years, so that's why they're never on. However, recently, uh, I guess some kids busted into the room that housed the switch to turn them on. And uh, one of my coaches called me and said that the lights have been on for three days, day and night. So I called Jessica, they got turned off, but they busted the lock on that. It looks like what happened is some kids went in there, busted in, turned the lights on, they moved the 50 tables out to the road. Because we don't have internet. I have, I have new doors on order for that building. And you don't need internet. Oh, you, you do. You need internet. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it links with the, the reservation system. So what it Steve, were you aware of the break-in? Yeah, as soon as they told me about it, then okay. I went out there, and the, the doors are, are rotted, and that's how they got in. So um, I've got new doors on order, replacement okay. doors. Well, make sure those uh, door charges get into this year's budget. And oh, yeah. Not like Carnwell. <laughs> Just joke. <laughs> or encumber. Okay. Anything else on Little League baseball related, softball, uh, what have you? Any topics? Anybody? Jessica, do you have anything else to add? Um, just other than the fact that, you know, I want to thank them for working so hard. We yeah. have reservations out there that in a year where we thought it was going to be less than last year with everything going on, it's actually turning out to be more. Well, fortunately, so you know, are good to us. You know, working together, you know, a number of us uh, with under the leadership of our county executive, we got this uh, ability to have, you know, baseball and so forth opened actually earlier than others were, you know, so, uh, you know, there's been a big effort throughout the county, you know, to coordinate that, to try to get it started earlier, which we're doing. And we have this year three new leagues that we've partnered with that are, are renting the fields, which Every year when you bring on somebody new that's a new league, that's a new opportunity to continue to grow things out there. So we brought on three new ones. So it's exciting. Okay. Nothing else? And uh, we'll close this topic and have some things to pick up on Monday night. Okay, thanks. Al, did you? I'm good. You're good with that? Okay. Well, the next item, you know, Brian, you know, would talk about soccer. You know, if you want to give us, you know, some of your comments, we've, you know, uh, Al and I also had a, a phone call and went through some of the list and in fact some of the things I think Steve's already been attending to, uh, like the footings out of Airport Park and so forth, but why don't you give an you know, overview and a summary as well. Yeah, good morning everybody. Good morning. Um, good morning. Steve, I can't thank you enough. Um, you know, all the work you guys do out there. Um, I stopped by the concession stand yesterday um, and uh, great progress over there. Um, we did, uh, we had that little mix up with the paint. I saw that was taken care of. Thank you for um, leaving that other pallet behind. So I'm ready to go uh, in about a month. Um, the fields are open. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we, we've got kids out there now. Uh, they're running around. You know, they've been sitting around for four months. So um, everything's looking good. Um, <clears throat> we're out on the fields. We're happy. Uh, I guess we're just looking for, you know, updates from you guys. I know we were talking about the pond earlier uh, in the year. I know that was Yeah, and we can there. update you shortly on that, yep. Brian. Um, I, I really don't have much. Um, mm -hmm. You know, again, we're excited to get back out on the field. The, you know, the grass, everything looks great. <laughs> um, you know, we're just, we're getting out there, and I'm going to start prepping the fields uh, early next month. So we also have a contract with you with a similar circumstance. We had signed one last year, but it needs to be renewed. What did we have? Don't we need to renew it, right? We do, yeah, yeah each year. You looked at me like I was saying something no, wrong. No, that's okay. Yeah. No, sorry. And, and <laughs> I, I've forgotten. What, what's the subsidization amount? that Three. Was? Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah. And last year was actually the first year that we had a, a contract. Yeah. With right, yes, years. because I yeah. pushed uh, to, yeah. to make sure. Well, because of legal we advice to. previously, yeah. you know, uh, that we need to have that. Uh, in order to do the subsidization and, and work on the fields, I think, quite honestly. Yeah, well, why don't you give us a little summary of, are, of you know, where to cover, yeah, what you, right. know, you guys what, are covering. Yeah. Why don't you give us a summary, if you would, please, of, of the nature of the activity you know, and what you guys are doing, because I know you also take care of the fields. It's not as extensive as what Jeff and the team do because you have a limited you know, number. You don't have all that. But uh, maybe give the board a summary of what you're, yeah, you're so doing. I, 
and some of your costs that between you Between the between the two parks, we have um, four, five, six, seven. We have eleven fields. Uh, I'm the field director, so I'm maintaining them, uh, lining them every week, um, making sure that the goals, everything is safe, uh, making sure the the area is safe. Um, uh, like you said, it, it's hard to get uh, volunteers. You know, the the initial prep of the fields is you know 30 to 40 hours. Um, you know, to get the lines dropped and uh, you know to start that maintenance. Um, you know, as far as costs are concerned, uh, we don't have to worry about paint. You guys are providing that for us. And we appreciate that. Um, you know, the, the lining machines, uh, we just bought a new one. Actually, we bought two last year. We had, uh, we had two. The backup was dead. Uh, so I, I bought a, a small replacement for that. Um, you know, that was about $750. Um, then our primary uh, lining machine broke. Uh, that was close to two grand. Um, and then there's you know, basic upkeep of those uh, of those tools, um, and then backup supplies on top of that. Uh, that you know, the, the league is covering. Uh, I looked into you know also fertilizing the, the fields. Um, I kind of worked with you guys a little bit earlier in the year, um, and now that the kids are being are back out on the fields, we. Uh, we kind of skipped on that. We didn't want any chemicals on the field. Um, but, uh, you know, trying to get rid of geese at Rockingham, <laughs> that's been a challenge. Uh, there, was, uh, there was about 50 earlier in the year. There's, there's about five right now. So I'm trying to work on that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's mostly just keeping the surrounding area safe. Um, you know, the, the turn at Rockingham, which again, Steve, thank you. Um, you know, working with keeping the cars off the fields and away from the kids. Um, you know, just little things that the club has done, you know, with the fencing and stuff like that. Um, another uh, expense that we had uh, was, I guess it was about $2,500 um, for temporary lighting uh, so that we could uh, pay for, so that we, our, our professional training that we have for the kids in the fall um, we could finish it. <laughs> the, uh, the sessions usually go from five to six and six to seven. Uh, and as October comes around, that, set, that six to seven is, is short. So, um, you know, I, I bought uh, four uh, 2000 watt LED lights. Um, I know we had some complaints from the town, from the residents over there. Um, but I adjusted the lights and that seemed to keep them, uh, keep them happy. Uh, also Karen. bought uh, some generators to, to work those lights. Um, and I was using my large generator for my house. Uh, that was a little too loud for people, so I bought more quiet uh, generators. Uh, so, I mean, that was about uh, 4000 out of pocket for the, for the, uh, for the club. Uh, it was a fun project for me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we were able to keep the kids out there. I know it's after dark. Um, and parks do close at dark, but uh, you know we're just trying to get that uh, that professional training for the kids. For the you know, this is their <laughs> this is their town. This is their experience, and you know, this is what keeps bringing people back. How many youth do you have participating at this time? I, I know it's yeah. you know, this year with COVID, but on the average, if you're looking at how it's growing, and uh, between rec and travel. I'd say we're be, uh, upwards about 600. Uh, that, those numbers, uh, I'm not with the registrar, but I am on the board, but um, I don't have those numbers. Well. And what's, what's the lowest age to highest age? Uh, we go from um, parent and me, which is uh, three years old, uh, all the way to um, basically 18 years old. So, um, you know, we have, our rec division is, is pretty strong, um, you know, and that's built over at uh, Airport Field. 
Our travel division is basically resides at Rockingham. Um, you know, we've had issues with water flooding and everything. Right. Like I was going to ask you in light of the thunderstorms, how is it over on Airport Drive? Because we had looked at you know a, 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 yep. an interim solution that would be involving getting airport and uh, the cemetery you know owner and so forth to to allow us to do some drainage right. uh, control there yeah no i mean steve had a great idea of putting turf over there <laughs> <laughs> but uh <clears throat> um i was at airport earlier in the earlier during the whole COVID thing and um it, it was unwalkable at that time i mean that was early spring. right because we're getting a lot of yeah wet i saw the guys day. out there yesterday mowing so I'm assuming it was pretty good. Um, Rockingham holds the water pretty well. Um, you know, what was it? Uh, Wednesday, we had those torrential downpours. Right. Three o'clock, the sun came out and Tried on we, had, up. we had practice. Okay, yeah. So, uh, you know, there was a couple puddles here and there. Right. Um, actually, Steve, the porta potties at airport, we get them back where they work. Uh, and the only reason why I ask is because they're literally sitting in a puddle. <laughs> okay. So, I moved them. <laughs> That's where they were last year. But yeah, I can put them back. Awesome. Thank you. Um, but you know that's that's our that's our club. Okay. And, uh, you know we're we're always working hard to keep the kids safe and uh, give them the best experience that they can. Okay. Thank you. Do they go through your registration system or it's just? They just use the fields without registration. Um, they use the fields without registration per the contract. We don't do any rentals right. out at the soccer fields just because of the wet conditions. They so frequently have to shift mm. between different areas. Mm. So the two soccer field facilities are not revenue generating mm. facilities for us. Okay. So we talked about when we met a couple times, we talked about a couple things, right? First of all, if you look at the signs, when you go into the park, particularly looking at uh, Rockingham, we talked about getting some readable signs. And I think, Jim, you were working on the, the words to get that stuff done. That would be nice to get that done. We looked at your playground equipment. I mean, you have two or three swings over at Rockingham and a couple of monkey bars. Pipes. Pipes, whatever they are. So we, we <laughs> talked about, you know, is there something we can do there? We looked at the millings for the parking lot because you've got a bunch, again, over at Rockingham. We're trying to figure out can we use that milling? And I think Steve, I don't know if you or Mike Sheehan got involved in that, but it would, we'd have to rent the machine to, to break this stuff up. But Yeah, and we, you know, I had explored with uh, East Fishkill. I think there's some equipment that they can use. You know, so we're going to. Mike didn't have the equipment. So. Yeah, it's going to cost about $19,000 yeah. to rent out the equipment. That's so right. I know that those are kind of things that you're looking at. You talked about the goose poop, so I won't go into that because <laughs> I've got letters from your, your neighbors there in the area. Um, Shelter at Rockingham in case of storms. Is there something we can do over there? Like, I don't know, there's a tarp, Steve, or something we can put out there. So in case there's a storm, they have some kind of shelter that's not being poured on. I know I'm kind of asking you now without talking to you ahead of time, but if you have any suggestions, certainly we'd, we would appreciate that. Anything temporary like that's going to be susceptible to wind damage um, okay. and ultraviolet damage. I mean. Ideally, you'd want to put a pavilion of some sort there, and, and right. I don't have and the funds in my budget. Sorry, that is something we're thinking of doing is you know putting a, a shed there. I know we talked about right. That. We talked about um, shed. You know the shed you guys had. We well, we uh, that's using actually for the Challenger field. We talked right. about that a little bit earlier, and it's I think it's too small for what yeah. you want anyway. Uh, but if we could you know uh, have that shed and then create some sort of a pavilion, kind of like what we have at. Um, you know, at airport, I, I think that would be more than sufficient. Um, <coughs> yeah, it, obviously, it's all up for discussion. It, what's it, what's it, the parking it. situation at Rockingham? I know many times it's kind of so jumbled. It, it's it's really ad hoc parking. Uh, when you pull in, when you pull into Soxfield Drive on the right hand side, there's some parking that's been taken up by a lot of buildings. Okay. Um, so there's parking there. Once you enter the park, um, everybody parks on the right hand side. Uh, there's porta potties in the end now, so that does take a little bit. Um, I, I put up no parking signs around the, the curve. Nobody understands no parking. <laughs> um, but then where the fence was in the back by the pond, uh, people parked there. 
And then when you get all the way to the back of the park, uh, that grass <laughs> area, people are parking there. My, I live in Hyde Park, and my son played travel for Hyde Park, so I've been to that field gotcha. a couple of times. Yep. Parking is a challenge, because it is it's not lying. Right. Not Especially the back area uh, is sinking a little bit, uh, right. so those millings would be you know, fantastic. I have, I have a question. As far as the millings go, have we reached out to Dutchess County? Because they must use milling at Baldwin Park that they could share with us. We have, we the, have the millings. That's the field. Equipment. Just spreading it. So we actually have the milling at the field already yeah. at Rockingham, which is spreading it is the question because it's a lot of it's big chunks of asphalt and rocks and stuff. So somebody has to grind it up and, and use it. What is, the, what is the county use, though? I mean, theirs has to be ground up for them to put down on the park. Maybe we can reach out to them and see if they're willing to help us. See if they have equipment to do exactly. it. Exactly. Why don't we reach out and find out? I mean, this would be a great shared service. Honestly. Because yeah. they have to use it for the parks in the county. So that might be, you know, mm -hmm. something that could be looked at instead of buying or renting or anything. It may be able to help all of us. And our other areas, you know, our other towns and stuff as we work. Yeah, well, that's why I say, you know, East Fishkill does, and so we're working on that right, you know, to get again, equipment you know, from. The county yeah. has no, that's larger fine. Than yep. East Fishkill because they have the other parks in the county that they might be able to help us. And Castle Point, can we look into. Castle Point can certainly use it too. The road that goes down to the ball fields, that's, oh, that's they all pretty bad. Actually, you know, Reese Park all, yeah. all need that. So, so that might be a, a hope. So you also talked about there's a fence that goes around that pond. I guess Tom's going to talk about the actual drainage right. of the pond later on. But we have kind of like, I don't even know, it's chicken wire or something up there. But it's, it's really not safe it and we should really. It's really not doing much. <laughs> Especially on the on the field side, you know, it's on, on the sides covered by trees and stuff like that. It's still, you know, viable. But on the field side, it, you know, it's uh, especially on the far corner of the full field. Yep. There's nothing. So is there something, Steve? Maybe we can do. I know we kind of walked that before, and I don't know if we have fence and stock or anything we can use today. But at least temporary until they get the the pond, you know, drained down the road. Because that's going to probably be a at least a year or so project away, I would imagine, right? With I have some fence posts in stock. I don't have fencing in stock. Um, one of the suggestions I was going to make here today is that we start putting numbers to these projects that you yeah. right. keep assigning to me because uh, I, I can't get to everything at once, and, and that's the issue. You know, I, I hate coming here every meeting and saying that, no, it's not done uh, because we've been working on something else. And you know, if, if we can get a priority on that, and then keep in mind as well that we get called away from the work that we're doing to come here or next door to emergency services for um, something that is urgent and has broken and needs immediate repair. So um, it's, it's tough to, to get the stuff done in the amount of time that you're expecting. Steve, you juggle well. That's all I can say. We try. <laughs> As far as the pond, I know Steve had mentioned that there's, um, you know, the October timeline. So is that still a possibility? Well, for the Tom, why, well, Tom is, why don't you report on it now? So our office has been working with the biologists, and we have a submission into the Army Corps engineers because we'll need a permit, we'll need their approval to fill in the pond. But that's the concept right now that we fill in the pond and make it disappear entirely, basically. Um, it's a man-made pond, apparently, from made for ice skating, ice skating, whatnot, years ago. Um, it seems like they're going to be agreeable to it. They asked for some more information. They were talking about coming out and doing a site visit, so we tried to email them the information to avoid uh, having to wait for the site visit. Um, and then we're also waiting on feedback from DEC in regard to just making sure it's clear of any endangered species. So once those blessings are in place, we can start to figure out how and who might be able to fill that pond. Um, one of the things we were kicking around is the possibility as the county's working on Old Hopewell Road, the rock that might get hammered out of there might be suitable material to fill the pond. So it might be worth considering a place that, that could be placed and staged you know, as we await and we get confidence that this can happen so that that material will be available and we wouldn't have to purchase it, hopefully. I think, you know, I had a preliminary talk uh, with the commissioner and I think they're, they're willing to consider some things, but I think, you know, first is would DEC approve that, you know, coming from a 
a regularly used road, you know, as far as chemicals and salt and everything else is a contaminated. You know, I know we're talking about blowing the rock, you know, the rock yeah, that comes right. out of lowering the names. hills. But we're not talking sub -base, But I think we have to get a better idea of what that <coughs> would be, and yep. then crushing it. Right? You're not going to. Yeah, it would need to be. It would need to be like smaller pieces right. to, to fill in properly without voids. And Do we have a timetable for all the stuff you're talking about here? Like, you know, we need to have the site visit DEC to approve and, you know, when can we fill in the bond? Are we talking October this year? Are we talking next year? What do we... I'm hopeful we could have the approvals in before October. And get it filled in before well, the end of the year? Well, the question is also then the, the money to do it, whether we are able to use the material or we have to purchase it and who we have to spread it out right. because this might be a little bigger than the equipment that Steve's has that he can handle. We've had the survey done. The environmental engineer has... Yes. We've gone and completed that, so now and it's, it's going in the process to Army Corps, of And we've addressed their first batch of comments. We're right. hoping that'll satisfy Army Corps. Right. Tom, DEC has been extremely slow. There, Tom, how yeah. deep is the pond? I would say on an eight maximum three or four feet. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Four feet? Really think it's three if, or four? If four feet, I'm thinking more like three feet max. Okay. It's, it's hard huh. to see. Aren't you swimming in the last week, Brian? <laughs> There's a lot of weeds in there, so it's hard to see. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, I guess my question then is finished product, would we be able to set up another field in that spot or is it going to be? I think we can do that or, or potentially a parking lot as you were discussing there or a little bit of both. Okay. So I think that's something to also start to consider assuming that pond goes away, how do you want to utilize that space? Okay. That's, that's good. Yeah, no, that would be great. Yeah, win-win for her. Okay. Steve, do you have anything else with respect to the soccer initiatives? Well, if, if at all possible, I think we ought to take advantage of the free material um, from Dutchess County Highway. And I don't know exactly what their plans are. When that becomes available, um, we should probably uh, stockpile it at Rockingham when it does. Well, I'll follow up with Commissioner Balkine again on that. Okay. I think you made a good point, though, Dick. Is it, are we going to be able to use that? Right. I mean, that's what... To contaminate it or whatever. So we I just got to be careful know. of that, too. Well, again, assuming they're down into the bedrock and it hasn't, you know, it, most of the stuff runs off the road, you know, and uh, into the ditches that go well, to we'll drainage. Do you see? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to DEC yeah, as we'll part of this. And, and if they find something yeah. like a blanding turtle concern, that might stop the whole Exactly. Show. My only question is, it doesn't appear that should be an issue. Where would we store it at Rockingham? That was something I want to discuss as well. As, yeah. as, as this becomes a reality, we want to think about that because we also, we don't want to move it too many times or too far, but we also right. don't want to impact your use of it. What about in the back where that, I guess it was an old, I don't know, electrical or water tank all the way in the back. So if you go past the pond and off to the right, there was an old storage area. I think Camo used to occupy that, Steve. Can we put stuff back in there? Yeah, I believe it's a pump house, pump um, house, and it's unused. That area there is not really going to be suitable for that. I would suggest um, somewhere where you can push in it that grass board. area beyond the cul-de-sac in the back there. Right. Well, that uh, you know, right next to the pond. Parking, yeah. Uh, especially to the far field. Right. Uh, How about around the tower itself? No, I wouldn't. Wait, wait. We, we can look in into that. That's, yeah, I think those are septic around. fields in there. Well, yeah. That's all good points. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll do that. That's, Tom, that's something we can, work, you know, you and I can meet out there yeah. and discuss. Okay. Yep. You know, it, the, back to the airport drive. Uh, yep. You know, where I think somebody I don't remember who was going to talk with the county with respect. You know, because part of the the ground that needed to be, I guess, dug out or expanded, you know, widened for the drainage was on county property. Do you recall? You're talking about the cemetery? Yeah, you know, no, there's a cemetery and then there was county area. That maybe was Tim had been talking about it, you know, in order to, you know, dig out to widen some of the areas so the water would move through more. You know. There were two spots. One was on county land and then the other was the cemetery, as I recall. Okay, maybe it's down here by yeah. the uh, by airport. Under the bridge and, you know, some, you know, probably down there. It was clogged and... Uh, Okay, and that's that's the I think that's the furthest downstream thing. So right, we've got right. we've got a concept for cleaning out some swales on our site because there's just very on the airport park site because there's right. very very shallow slopes on all of this, and then all of it seems to run through this pond, which I believe is part of the cemetery site. Right. 
and then we've got a badly pitched pipe here. Um, which I think that's going to be the biggest thing if we can get permission to work with the cemetery, take that pipe out, make it a swale, that'll help open up all the drainage and then we'll have to continue following that down and make sure it's open the whole way down. There was a spot on the airport side of 376 mm -hmm. where there was a bunch of uh, material that had washed into right, the I stream, sediment yeah, exactly. that was obstructing yep. the flow of the stream right. that we had down here talked right. about uh, yeah. cleaning out. And that, that's where the airport comes into it. I think the airport actually may own both sides now. Yeah, I, I don't remember. But you know, do you have something, Tom, that's uh, for the preliminary, for the air area on uh, the two sides of airport drive fields that you know we would have? Is that something that uh, we need to <coughs> hire out? Or is that something that Steve and Mike Sheehan's folks working together could dig out you know, with the proper supervision from you? I would think it could be a matter of digging it out. I, I don't think it's going to be a fancy thing, and I don't think there's a lot of a lot of earth movement to do to keep that moving. Um, I think it's just a matter of doing it carefully because, like I said, there's not much pitch, so it's just got to be carefully pitched. And we've got the machine as long as we've got the permission. To do so it. Let, let's let's work on that as first stage because that will at least help with some of the immediate draining off if you widen and deepen, you know, clean out those uh, swales. Right, and then we can need to determine who to contact with respect to the cemetery uh, issue. And yep. then the county. Uh, you That's know, a key I, piece. The county, the I'll, I'll talk with uh, you know, Commissioner Balkine. Okay. But if you can get me you know, something with respect to the county portion, so then I can well, see. I think on this map, we have he's, that. He's very supportive. Very identify, I'm, I'm thinking it's down here where it okay. shows. So I can get you a paper print yeah, of this or email get that. or whatever. Okay. But let's look at your know, first priority. Just cleaning out our swales and then yes we That'll get on the list because that That'll was some of the flooding first stuff. help yeah. sure especially where you get the immediate thunderstorms that uh, sit they have no place to run so so that drainage we were it was a subdivision we were looking at um the drainage there goes underneath 376 onto the airport property right. there's a pond on the airport property and then there's a big culvert that actually runs underneath underneath the terminal Right, um, and then which goes, is subject to another report, but, uh, anyway. and then goes under <laughs> go uh, yeah. under New Hackensack Road, pops up on yes the opposite side of New Hackensack Road, and then runs back, kind of down along New Hackensack, and then back under New Hackensack Road and out to the creek. So we do want to be careful what we do there because we don't want to negatively impact anybody downstream. Correct. Well, and I, and I think that portion of it, what I have in mind, I've, um, I was going to mention it later on, but I'll mention it right now for the board, is we've gotten the preliminary drawings you know, for the new Hackensack All Angels 376 roundabout uh, massive uh, document. That's right now in the plans for probably 2021, late 2021, uh, when they get done Old Hopewell Road, then the state and the county are working on that. Actually, pretty nice design, but the reason why it's relevant here, and I think that portion of it can be coordinated, because the, the state, when they're doing that whole roundabout, they're going to be funneling all of the water, everything down that area, you know, that goes along the south side of the airport into the Brown Road area, and putting some new swales, um, new catch basins in uh, to to also address some of the pollution issues, you know, sediment, you know, pollution and so forth that's going into the creek under our nine element plan. So, you know, that I think uh, could probably be addressed at around that time when they're doing that significant, you know, road work at the Because uh, they're going to investigate that whole system. Yeah, and that, well, they do. They have, it's clearly in the plans, they have to draw out more of the design and of course, you, you know, CPL is involved in that uh, whole, you know, process. So, so that I think keep in mind with respect to that, then we can work it upstream. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Any, anything else uh, uh, for yeah. Brian or? <clears throat> actually I do. So yeah, Brian sure. actually sent us pictures of uh, some benches okay. and I'll pass this around, but um, I don't know if all the board members got it. I know, I think Dick and I got it, but uh, they're looking to replace some benches, actually have benches put there as well as some of the bleachers. Um, do we have any idea how many bleachers, benches we needed, either airport or Rockingham? 
Because that's something we might be able to entertain out of the, the Parkland Trust, because right now I don't think you have, you have some bleachers, but you really don't have player benches, right. things like that. So it would be nice to be able to add those if we can. Yeah, so one of as far as the bleachers are concerned, you know, there's two at Rockingham, two at Airport. Um, the ones, uh, three of those four are in kind of disrepair. Um, if they get replaced, they get replaced. Um, you know, it, it's nice for the parents to sit on them for, you know, the, um, the large fields, especially at airport. Um, really only one of them gets used. Um, I think if they were put closer together, they might get used more. Uh, and if they were in you know, better standings, they would get used more. Is there any safety issue? Like, you know, some of the parks, like at uh, Castle Point, we have very decrepit uh, falling apart yeah. uh, bleachers. I do have a question. Steve, you put together a bench package for us uh, a few months back. Have you reviewed this also? Have you seen this? And it's yeah, that, I believe that Brian put that together for us. I have looked at it. Is it the same it. as what you Yes, us? yes. Yeah, actually, Brian supplied that. I didn't. Okay, sorry, Brian. I, I just no remember right. I needed a downward. Sometimes it says who's the front, sometimes yes. it doesn't. So you. I'm, you I'm working on that. Actually, going to sit down this week and, and get uh, that motor in again. Okay, um, so this is the same as what we had previously. Right. Perfect. Plus, Steve also has some of these other benches that he needs to focus on. Right. Like is that Castle something Point. that we need to yeah. discuss? Right. Yeah, I, I, I think it would be best if we discussed kind of yeah. all the bench repair and maintenance time. and how we do that and, and see what the cost is. We could yeah, if always you look decide at, to divide it out, but I think if you look, we need to do it as a group right. for the town, the entire group. I, I agree. If you look at just the uh, what and he's got you. in his repair for bleachers, it's only 1500 bucks. That's That covers a couple of, maybe a couple of bleachers. And as Dick well, said, I Castle know. Point is, I mean, I play softball down there and that, that bench is terrible. But, but as a bigger picture, as you were talking about, we should look at all the parks. All the parks. Exactly. Yeah. And if we're going to do we put together a, a capital exactly. plan or whatever we're going to take out of parking. Because we also have Mart's Field. We have some there exactly. that need repair. Yep. So, exactly. And you know, Robinson as well. Exactly. Yeah, so. so who do we get to put something together that, that puts all of the, is it Jessica? Is it Steve? Well, look, is somebody? Is it, I mean, you we know, should take a look at an entire package. So it's not like we're piecemealing all the time. Right. Exactly. I, I think that. The, the challenge is, you know, especially with Steve, uh, it's just the resources. He doesn't have a deputy, right? You know, Steve does that uh, work himself, but maybe CPL, since they've been looking at a lot of the fields, can help. Because I've asked him before, you know, it's a, it's a manpower, and he, you know, it's like, really what it is. So I think Tim, you know, in Utah can maybe help take a look at that. And, you know, we also have some other, you know, challenges that we've talked about out at you know, the ball fields in Robinson, including those dug dugouts that need to be torn down, but then do we replace with something? So, but I think the benches and look in the park, you can coordinate with Steve and Jessica on on that and make a, pro a package entire, proposal to the board. Right. I could also look on our side. Right. You know, we have uh, a board member that you know, looks out for donations and everything like that. And looks like, you know, they did with well, the we can go, you know, we can look at that as well and help and you know once we get an idea of what our needs what are. are so yeah. so one of the things though with respect to soccer you know um, as was noted you know, because of the change the conditions of the fields and things right. you know you don't have fixed dugouts no. and things like that so um, I the, the player benches are not fixed correct aren't they movable so we, currently the coaches buy uh, you know foldable benches okay uh, yeah, so that we have. But, but, yeah. but I mean, I, to, to the point, you know, I think, I don't know if there's a facility out there for storage. Well, we've talked about it, you know, as, because also he has the goal post, right. the end zone post, right? And right. the nets and what to do, you know, with those. And it's better to get them out of the weather, get them secured you know, as compared to how I mean, Brian a, you know, a lot, now. a lot of, you know, driving through the county, a lot right. of the parks, they're left out, you know, year right. round. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so... But you know, you for lining machines right. or bench, small benches or things like that. Even for and, and again, know, I think some sort of right. small shed would be helpful. Yeah, so even I, I know in that. some soccer fields they use a, a container from you know shipping containers. Or maybe we pull them from all the parks yeah. at the end of the season I mean, you, you, and you. store them someplace on the town. Well, I, maybe basically the, the, or the bigger issue is. 
the big, I mean, that's, that's fine. Steve's got facilities for that. But the, the big issue is during the season, right. how do you keep them from being stolen? Yeah. Yeah. Put a chain on them. I don't know. <laughs> Well, well, well honestly, that's what, that's, what we that's, we were, that, that's what we were thinking. You know, if we, um, before I brought it to the town, I brought it to the club to see about buying the, these benches, and you know, we were talking about securing them. And yes, that's why we were thinking about um, you know a shed of some sort. Right. Um, yeah, that's that's and, where and, I think. You know, there's there are fences along the uh, sides of Rockingham that we you know we can. Um, you know, chain these benches too. Uh, when we talked to Steve, Steve was thinking more of a, a permanent bench. Um, but you're right, Jim. I mean, we, we could get a 20 foot container that $1,200, $1,500, I think, is what it cost, and anchor it and then put a lock and so forth. Uh, Steve, have you ever done that before for the town? You know, I mean, well, I bought one for our property. I store. have not done it personally. But I know uh, Little League has one out at, at Robinson that they use, and I've seen them advertised. Um, we might want to look at that. Maybe we get a price on that, and then you can anchor it, right? Then you can lock it. Uh, but then it brings back my the previous gentleman told me how somebody broke in and oh, messed around breaking. with the lights, right? Yeah. They break into them. Yeah. Well, so that, that, that was a problem that the door had rotted out. out. I wasn't aware yeah. that that was a condition there. But, um, I mean, anything you put out there has the possibility yeah. of being broken yeah. into. Yeah. Well, we have a shed at airport that it's pretty crappy. But uh, <laughs> nobody right. has ever broken into it, knock on wood. Not that there's much in it. Watch it change. But <laughs> yeah. I, well, for the most part, over the winter and you know, for no, long, I, well, I keep everything in my house. Right. Um, yeah. I, I think you know what you know the outcome and it, it is from this meeting. We have some immediate things, but we we want to look in, you know, creating priorities for longer term as well. We're right. going to be entering soon, uh, another month or so budget season and I think it gets back to also what Steve and we've talked about it, and he has kind of a list but we need to prioritize our projects uh, over right. a period of time you know we we have issues with uh, obligating successor boards but at the same time we still have another year and a half you know with this board and we can be looking at those things and priorities right. you know for 2019 tw I mean 2020 and 2021 that's not uh, you know an issue so uh, that's what i think has to come out of here we know what the immediate you know requirements are and we have to get together that so steve can figure out a list or if steve you know steve again we i think you know board said to you before if you really are underhanded and you need somebody else then come to us i mean it doesn't mean that we're going to grant it but we're going to consider or look at how you deal with it. you know we don't like hiring, but I think you have to realistically approach it or say for 2021, right, in order to get done the list of things, right. and hopefully we're out of the COVID problem, then maybe we'll be more able to address a little bit more on the list. So that's just what we have to do. And I think with our sport, sports teams, you know, then we need to address what they need today to be operative you know, tomorrow and today. I like the idea of you working with the Recreation Committee and telling us what is needed at the parks in the town and giving us a proposal so we can prioritize what the needs are. For the and we'll then look at grant funding too. So. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. So thank you. Out, uh, thank you. Talk about the container, if it's like the one that we have out at Robinson, it's all sealed. Right. Yes. There's you're not getting in there. <laughs> one, you don't need to secure because you ain't lifting that. Thing. No, you're not lifting it. And there's a ton of room. All right. And that, the, the thing that got broken into out there was a door into a building. Yeah, and that's right. That steel container, no. Yeah, and, and, and the locking mechanisms on those containers because right. they have to go yes. through customs are significant. Like I said, I have one. But right? that would and be something we can look at. We can look at. And you, you can always put in a door, you know, you know cut it out and do something. So that's something I think, uh, Tom, yeah. we could be looking at. Mm -hmm. and, and you paint them up, you can put a little roof, you can even put a, you sure. know, a, a <laughs> Mr. Supervisor, because one of the things too, I think with the filling in of the pond at Rockingham, I think it gives, it changes the ability to use those fields. And so long as I've been here, there's really been no right. conceptual usage of that facility. Nobody's really what? you know, yeah. looked at it. There's, over the years, there's been studies at, Rock, at, uh, at, at the park at Rockingham, or not, um, at Robinson Lane, you know, they've, they've looked at 
as we know from Wappings Reform, right. there were right. you know plans to expand it for soccer in the past, but um, because of endangered species I issues, that didn't come to pass. Right. Those but um, <laughs> the um, but like I said, I, I, as far as I'm aware, there's no you know equivalent study that's no. ever been done at well, Rockingham. I and well, I think, I think it's all of our, it, think it's, it's all of our parts. As the board said before, I think, you know, part of our goal and objective was to look at our 12, 13 parks that are officially parks, right, as compared to all the other sure. vacant land, and say, here is what the use is going to be. We started off, you know, with Spook Hill, you know, to, to do that. We have, of course, Rockingham and the Airport Park and Robinson, you know, which are designated. We have Lawrence Field. But how do we do this? What, what do we want to do with Reese Park? Like, and, and, you know, and, which is a natural preserve sure. and has a lot of capability, but we haven't done that. So right. that's and the key as, priority, I think. As we discussed before with respect to the recreation fees charged as part of the subdivision process, right. you know, that... that which are waiting into, for your legal recommendation. Well, I mean, the recommendation, <laughs> the recommendation was to do a study of right. the parks right. to make a determination. Yeah, so we have our list. Well, uh, to, to use that to, to, to generate a metric as to what the recreation fees would be. But so. I think the, the yeah, I, and I think that's what we're doing. Right. It's exactly just like right. what we did with Spook Hill, right? Yep. With the one, you know, all exactly. the 12 commons, we, yep. we negotiated that. But I think the, the board, you know, and the planning board, ours and the planning board needs to have kind of what's the legal framework. But along with that is the parks, you know, and, and it's a combination of facilities, capital expenditures, expenditures right? right? And, and then you go to each developer or each you know, person and say, you know, we want you to put that money in there. But I think it's important we, we get that done. And I think, Jim, in the context of the budget this year, because we are talking about drawing down some monies from Parkland Trust, sure. right? And that's not an endless pit. And, you know, it's $600,000, sure. give or take. No, but and I think that's what we need to do. And then in the budget process, and to get back to one of Bill Beal's earlier points, not today, but in the past, about you know capital plan. We also have that from the state controllers, you know, from financial advisors and so forth. The need to do that, then we can be planning that as part of this year's budget planning process. I think that's what I recommend to the board that we you know do. And then you know Tom and Jim and you know Steve and everybody else can be getting that input to us. And, and one of the things that the city of Poughkeepsie did. Um, was you know they did an inventory of their parks and some of their park facilities they actually sold off um, because of you know budget constraints as far as maintenance did and the condition of, so if you a town may sell parkland however it needs approval from the legislature right. and one of the conditions typically is that the proceeds from the sale be used to improve another park so, you know, we've got some parkland, right. as the okay. town knows, that I, are not necessarily, yeah. you know, useful at this point exactly. in time. And to the extent that you, you know, dispose of properties that are, right. are in essence, a hindrance, um, you can use the, the proceeds right. from that. To, well, that's, uh, that's to, what, to you know, I think so we've I think been talking about. Yep. It's just like when we authorized, yep. what, last time, you know, for the Wheeler Hill to get, get an appraisal. Yes, we're not doing anything, as, as Bill exactly. correctly points out. We have to decide, but right. that gets back to this whole issue. You know, we exactly. first have our, our officially designated parks, then we have our parkland, right, and vacant lands, and we have a lot of that. We have over 1,000 acres of that stuff, you know, here in, in the town. But I think, you know, as we look at it, we are, we have been talking about, you know, Councilman Phillips raised, you know, with respect to quiet acres, we have our kind of, uh, you know, community parks that are in the various hamlets that we need to look at. And as we are seeing more younger families come into it, this is a perfect time to look at what we do. And hopefully also the younger families grow your organizations, right? And then I agree with you, Jim, and particularly gets back to Steve. Steve has to maintain these, or we also have the, you know, dirt bikes and everything else uh, that we get increasingly greater number of calls on. I, right. I agree so. with you, but there are parks that probably are not being utilized. There are. That we need right. to look at, and, and thank you, Jim, yeah. for right. the input that if we need right. to get rid of them and right. put the money towards parks that are being right. utilized, so be it. Right. Yeah. So that would be something else. Yeah. That no, that's you, right. I don't know how you judge the usability of some parks and what are being used and what are not being used. Or you know, or what could they be used for, right? You know, when you look at some of those. Right. But, if but as, we're talking about the thirteen, you know, those. But 
the bigger lands then could go into the trust fund, Parkland Trust, if we were to sell something. And, and to his point about changing uh, by filling in the pond at Rockingham, it would completely change the dynamic of that field. Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, right now I, I have, you know, the front two fields, I, I could shift a little bit, you know, to uh, adjust the wear on the fields. By a little bit, you know, a full field that's uh, 60 by 118 yards, I could adjust it two yards in, in each direction. Right. That, that's, that's it. So that's nothing. Um, but with, with adding, you know, that area, it'll that's greatly great. increase everything. So you know what our option then, so you yeah, can kind of yeah, rebalance yeah, things. Sure. Right. You know, you, you, you mentioned right. the, the playground. You know, if I could adjust those fields, maybe we get a you know a nicer playground right. in right. that area, and now we have a place not only for soccer, but you know for right. the rest of the community right. to come right. to. Right. Good. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Keep those little siblings busy. We'll <laughs> but uh, but I think that's how, how does the community yeah. benefit overall, and that's that's you know very important. So, yeah. not just the uh, athletic teams, you know, which right. is also right. important. But I think as you try to address community concerns, and you know, particularly your. Uh, that neighborhood, you know, significant change, you know, you're, you know, as I closely look at it, you know, all the houses that are turning over, you know, the sales, you know, there, uh, a lot of, of young families now coming into that yeah. area. Well, you know, you, you have a playground uh, where kids are playing soccer, you know, those little kids are on the playground, they're looking at, you know, the other, the bigger right. kids having fun and, you know, it just gets them more and more involved in the community. Yeah, you're right, you're 100% right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you, you very thank much. You. Thank you. Any, uh, we're, we have 10 minutes to go to 12. Any, any other topics that any council person like to bring up at this point in time? Yeah. You know, uh, what in the 10 minutes then, if we don't have anything else, you, Tom, why don't you just give a brief update on Spook Hill? Okay. Okay. If you don't mind, you know, we've, you know, we have the same thing, the grant monies, you know, which we're communicating with Wayne Saylor, but they finalized the plan. We just had a Spook Hill committee meeting, and Steve and I and, and, and Tom and so forth are participating. So they, they have a plan which is really workable that would be, you know, right within the CDBG grant monies, you know, at this point. Of course, that's a reimbursement, you know, of money, so we would still have to allocate it probably out of Parkland Trust. but. You know, 100 percent of this. This is really phase one of what would be the further development of the park that you've seen before, and that we've approved as far as you know going that phase on uh, for this for the fund money. So why don't you just summarize for sure. us, Tom, in the remaining few minutes? So, so for Spook Hill, what we've included in phase one is basically a paved parking area, which pushes in from the existing fence enough to get diagonal parking on a one-way travel lane, good enough to get buses in and out if need be. Um, the, the committee asked that this island that's going to help channelize traffic be like a paver island um, with, with seasonal planter pots on it. And then... Um, and, and the reason for that is, and Steve brought up a good point, is that trees and bushes won't really grow there because you have heavy salting and all of it. And so Steve's recommendation was we, we think of some larger planter pot, uh, pots. And keep in mind, the reason for this is for ADA. You know, you, so this is this part of it. The uh, and what Tom's reviewing, you know, the county and CDBG, it, you know, has approved in, in the concept will be totally funded under that hundred thousand dollar grant. So so, go ahead, so so that being said, a lot, all of these improvements need to be also geared toward ADA. So the That's ADA right. parking, the ADA entrance of the building, the bathroom is being converted over ADA compliant bathrooms is all part of that. Um, so that's, that's the site plan end of it, and we want to work with the town forces to do all this as much as possible. There might be some things we need to sub out or have small contracts like the fence, possibly concrete curbing, things like that we've got to sort out a little bit. But our next step on this, it seems to be, is, is to get the, um, the authorization from the town board to go to the county to show them exactly what we want to do and get the county's agreement that the CDBG money can be used toward this. So we've got a site plan going there that I think is pretty much to the point where we've got what we need and where the committee's satisfied. This would be the formal final approval, the right. preliminary approved the concept of what we need to you know, propose it. And then we've got an architectural plan that's going to support the building improvements, where pretty much what we're talking about doing is taking the existing building right down to the concrete block. And, and Steve had a good suggestion, our architects agreed, that in order to make that building look more complete, 
putting new truss over the entire building, including the overhang, will make it look sort of more symmetrical and more like a, a single thought instead of several separate thoughts. Okay. And I think it'll actually make the construction go a little smoother for the, for the guys doing it. So between that and converting the storage area in here um, into a sort of a changing room with some lockers and some other things, um, and we're gonna put an outdoor bottle filler in in lieu of a drinking fountain. So that's gonna get a nice facelift, all new doors, and have a nice new look to it and be usable. And, and proper drainage. And secure it. And have a roof that doesn't leak. Yeah. And that's part of phase one also? Yeah. That's all part of phase Sh one. Show them the, the, prelimin the budget that you uh, yep. worked on a lot, you know, so you can, yeah, but that's doing the fence, the parking lot, and the building. And, and, and we feel the reason we can make that go almost twice as far is because we've got town forces able to do it. So that's, that's a big help. So this is, this is the overall yeah. plan that was developed for all the phases. And this phase 1A is basically what we're talking about now. We've got an estimate of just under 100,000, around 97,000, with the idea that this was a lot of it done by town labor. And then future phases go into the walkway to a track, a future track, the athletic equipment. Other things have been kicked around by this committee, and apparently Randy's Randy's indicated there's there's money in a 501c3. Yeah, yeah, the, he's got look at these actual people. money, and we created 501c3 for Friends of Spook Hill, uh, and the actual and committed uh, is another hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, for this. Good. So we want to yeah. get through this, get the county satisfied, get the C. And we may be able to get a second grant project know, complete once and the county yeah, determines yeah, what to yeah. do. But we can figure out where to go from there. So we, we have it you know well covered at this point in time, and I think it uh, won't be a, a great expense to the okay. town, but a great benefit to the okay. town. And we've had the residents involved, and including on this last call, uh, Beth and Jack Devine, who live right down the road, are actively involved. Uh, you know the ones you know Randy lives on Reggie you know Drive, and they've been all involved, and in, uh, so it's been a, a great community effort to to get us here. So now we want to get something yeah, finalized. I think it's great. But uh, CPL has done a great job, yeah, I think, in pulling it together, working on it. So, and, and this is something that has high visibility oh, with the county. Right. I was even the county executive's been out there twice. So, well, this, this is a win-win for everybody. Yeah, yeah I've no. And the you know, school board, others are in there. We're just, you know, having yeah. to figure out how they get them more involved. Special right. Olympics. Yeah. That's so, so if it's okay with you, then on Monday night under that category no for things coming out of here, we'll have a resolution. And Jim, you know, if you can just make note of that for going the next step, you know, just a formal resolution approving and submitting it to the county and then um, taking it from there. That works. Thank you. Okay. So I think, again, this, this is the idea, I think, Angela, we've been talking about. How do we focus and repurpose parks if they can be done? So. So and to to that point, um, I think at the last town board meeting there was a discussion about the playground at Quiet Acres. Yes. So I don't know. I and leave that. You know, I think as Councilman Phillips wants to right. discuss that since he's not here, we okay. can just let it sit. I mean, we all have comments to make, and Jessica has done some homework. I okay. mean, in fact, if you want to hand it out, I was going to say before in I the last after, couple yes. minutes, yeah. you did some work. So <laughs> I, I think in response to the councilwoman's request and others, you know. Just do that, and I then give you, a quick summary of you it. can give a quick summary. Then we can have time to review it, and then on Monday we can discuss it. Makes sense, all right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, um, in this for everybody to look over. Actually, I gave you guys mine, so we'll get to the end. I want the cheat That's right. Well, the quick one on the front here is uh, Jessica. Just in the future. Put your name and put the date and where this came from, yes. please, on documents that you give so, us. So, the board, please, yes. please. So this is basically just a packet um, Did you get this one? that I wrote up as. I don't think so. I don't, I don't have that, I, that's actually in there multiple times. That is uh, the warranty information on there. So this is just a cheat sheet, the front page here on what goes into determining how you pick playground equipment, which has uh, the main steps, which you're first looking at what age group is it for. It splits playground equipment into three different things, which is two to five, five to 12, two to 13. So when you're looking to do a park like Quiet Acres, you're looking for something for mm -hmm. two to 13. You're looking for an all, all, all age range of equipment. 
Um, when we did Robinson Lane, that's a really high trafficked park. We did that project with two large separate pieces of equipment, one for a younger age range, one for the older kids because of the amount of foot traffic that goes through there. Park like Quiet Acres, you wanna combine it into a single piece of equipment. So then the other things you look at when you're purchasing playground equipment is what are, I put it on here as the ups and downs, literally, and the acrosses, which you wanna make sure that you have engaging ways up for kids of different abilities and ages, uh, engaging things across, and a couple of different ways down. And then what can be done from the ground in the equipment. Not everybody likes to climb, not everyone is able to climb, so you wanna make sure that anything you're picking out has at least one or two elements that can be enjoyed from the ground. So to tell you what these two packets that I gave you are, the first one with the cheat sheet stuck on the front is just a couple pages of comparable equipment to the proposal that I had given you guys last time. So, equipment that is for the right age range, equipment that is in comparable size. Some of them go a little wider, some of them go a little higher. The one that I had picked out is a little more compact but goes higher. And then the second packet are the actual quotes, okay? So the one that's nice and thick there. The thick one. The thick one, yeah. The first uh, page on there is the actual quote. It's the same quote you guys got last time. I just gave you another copy. Um, the photo of the equipment is in the uh, one of all the comparable equipment, just for your reference. And then the rest of what's in here are the individual swing components, all right? So we're doing a top swing, we're doing uh, a reflection swing, which is one where you can have a small child and an adult on it together facing each other. Um, and then just a, two bays of regular swings. So that's all included along with the installation. In that $34,000 quote that I had given last time, um, that's all in there. So that is the climbing equipment, that is the four bay swing set with the three varieties of swings, that is the engineered wood fiber, and that is the installation. Big difference in the mulch and wood fiber, huh? Yeah, yeah. Several thousand. So if you go all the way to the back, you're gonna see some stuff that says miracle equipment. Right. That's another full quote that I got for other equipment. Um, you know, you only have so many choices of who you can work with uh, due to the state, the state bid. So you can see on that one all the way at So the both of these are state bid I yeah. companies? Okay. Yeah. And you, you, there's only about four choices of who you can use off of the state contract list. So that one, has another piece of equipment comparable to what I had gotten the original quote for. So a piece of five to, or a piece of two to 12 year old equipment, a four bay swing set. And with the installation, that one was $47,000 for that one. So we don't really need to have much discussion I think about this one now unless you have any clarifying questions I know that the majority of this discussion was going to be yeah wait till Chris is here and then we but clearly if there's questions yeah. I mean based yeah. on quick review that's, yeah. that's so fine. the quote on the on the front of this packet of thirty four thousand four hundred and fifty two dollars and fifty three cents mm -hmm. is that this no that's the miracle playground one so right. so it's confusing though because there's all these different pictures and yeah. what what is this so what this one is, okay, you've got two quotes in here. The miracle quotes at the back, you can separate I, I don't know what that means. What's a miracle either. quote? Just I, the I name just want to see it's what the, the quote is. Yeah. There's one quote, here's right. the second quote. So what is the picture? With that. That's why I made that one on there. All right, so. I wanted to save a little color in. What, what exactly is this picture? This is the miracle one? That's the miracle one. That's the $47,000. 
So does does this proposal include swings also? Correct. Yes. All right. So is there a photo of right. this with the swing set laid out like that? Do we have that anywhere? We have the individual components. But you don't have the layout like this. We have the layout. We have all the parts of it. So the bay. Right, but the, there's not a layout like. I want to see something like this. So then when people ask me, well, what are you yeah. spending thirty-five thousand dollars on? Right. I can say this. This is what we're spending thirty-five thousand because this looks a lot different than that. So why, why is it something like, something, yeah, something like one of these photos here, and the one that the second package? That would be nice to see it. So you can do as Bill said, yeah. a comparison between the forty-seven and the thirty. I agree. I, I think that would be good. Because so so. just... the footprint of this looks a lot smaller than what it actually right. may be with the swing set. Yeah. So can you have that for us for the town board meeting on Monday? Um, I can. Please. I yeah. have uh, part of it. I mean, ideally, well, yeah, just just. Put it together, then you right. can PDF yeah, it to us. Chris is going to need to yeah. see that all Yeah, time. he needs to see it. Yeah, but but that that's not going to help. You know, if you, you know, Bill just you know, and I agree with Bill. You know, I, this is what we'd like to see. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you can say, can okay, or you, if you have to cut and paste, Jessica, then cut and paste. I cut you know, and paste. But, yeah. I had thought it would. It would just that's be right. it, It's picture and, and then Bill's right. It, it's easier to explain it to right. people at public right. meeting. Yeah. Oh, this public meeting too. So. It says, what, yeah. are you, what are you proposing? I can't show them all those the yeah. pictures. It just be easier. That, that, that's all right. No, no, but that's fine. We appreciate that. But if we can just get a side by side comparison of the two, and the pictures speak a thousand words. I have a question now for you the, the sure. warranty. So we have the council before mentioned the warranty. So I see you have a one page here. Does this apply to both the $35,000 one and the $47,000 one? So they're both the same? Or? Um, the $47,000 one has their, um, their in their quote, has their warranty information. So this warranty information is for the thirty-four for, for the $34,000, correct. Which is lifetime warranty on certain things. To water it down for you, not everything that's listed on their warranty, okay, is in this equipment. We don't have corded equipment in here. So they're just listing every bit of their warranty for every kind of equipment that they have. Did, so did you, you get a copy? No. I have one for Okay. Here, so I'll, I'll, I'll um, where it Jess says, has one yeah, okay. where it says one year <coughs> limited warranty on spring bouncer and coils, we don't have any of that in, in our quote. So this is just okay. their general. So, you know, put together, you know, what the, you know, council men and women have, you know, requested. So mm -hmm. we have that visually, you know, for, yeah. for Monday and then you know, side by side warranty maybe as well. Okay. Yeah, side yeah, by side so pictures would be yeah. very easy. You know, and instead of all the individual pieces, that's Which fine. We can look at it and that's good. I mean to know, but it's yeah. good just a simple good. side by side, you know, right. for the record that uh, So you can see the actual layout of our you know the comparison yeah. that make it easier. And this is a picture of this is the existing yeah. equipment there. That's a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where? Quiet acres. This is quiet acres. Okay. What is, is that pavilion used for anything, or what is what vandalism? Is it? Okay. I was going to say. I'm not sure it's got much useful light. Yeah, you don't want it. So, so on that point, is there any kind of safety issue here at Spook Hill, or we need to? No, sorry, there are quiet acres that you need to take down that swing set or the slide, I should say. The slide has slide to come down. To so come shouldn't down. we do that pretty quickly? Yeah. Well, standards? we did. We've made the repair to the slide that oh, okay. we had spoken about before. Um, and I believe that, the, you know, until then, until the new stuff comes in, it, it should be safe. Okay, if it's been repaired, so yeah. that's okay. good. Yeah, that, yeah, to take out that danger. Okay. Because I know there was, a, there was an issue before, yeah. so I just wanted to make sure it was taken right. care of. Right, we made, we made repair shortly after. Okay, that. great. Just to, just to try to be clear, that though, the, the installation doesn't re-include removal of the existing. Steve is very excited to go whacking at it and take it down. Okay. <laughs> we, we had a meeting with the installer and... Um, hashed out who would be doing what so Great. so neither one of these proposals neither one is we have to take it down as a town so Steve's got to find a time to do it yes okay and I think you said it would be less than an afternoon to knock down what's there well, I didn't say that he's not busy enough <laughs> alrighty well, so that part wasn't you know, on the record but also, we, won't, we won't hold him to you it know, have we looked at uh, <laughs> the flooding issue and is 
that the best location, or is there another location at that ground? Is that okay? Yeah, that ground it's is all level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I looked at that too. It's the and only the, location. Okay, just it's only worse places actually. But I've no. seen yeah. conditions where you could only see the peak of that roof exposed. Yeah. When yeah. when the creek is flooded, yeah. yeah. So why are we going to spend thirty five thousand right. dollars to put a playground in a flooded area? Yeah. I, I'm I'm confused on the whole strategy. You don't have any other choice on that on that property. The only other it's all that great. No, Every, that no whole property is that great right there. And the type of it's equipment very level piece of property. should survive being flooded. It should be yeah. able to get hosed down and then. Right. I, I just don't feel that it's responsible to spend thirty five thousand dollars on playground equipment in a flood zone that we know is going to flood. That that's the issue I have here. And obviously the base that's going to have to appear underneath this uh, playground equipment is going to have to either be uh, rubber or mulch or something. That's not going to survive flooding. So we got to do this in a smart way. Perhaps we need to uh, put a, some sort of a foundation down underneath or raise the ground or do something here. Uh, because the last thing I want is, you know, a year after we put this in for people to be sending me pictures of it underwater. And if you're telling me you only see the roof peak, that's a problem. That would, yeah, that would mean you'd be building up about seven, eight feet for I mean, the this playground. Is, this is no, I, I, you know, whether it's seven, eight feet, yeah. but, you know, the councilman's point is that's something that would at least keep the money that we put in from washing out. Right. Um, and, that would and, have a solid foundation. That and, could and, and who could survive. use it if it's flooded? Well, it's generally only flooded for a few days when yeah. it does flood. Um, and I've only seen that condition once since I've been here, but that was that year, I think it was the year I actually started here. Um, started or restarted? Well, no, started, started. the initial year. And, and that year, um, Robinson Lane was underwater twice. We had uh, two successive tropical storms come up through. And um, that's, that's when, yeah, I think that's when it was. Mm -hmm. It, it's a safety requirement to have the mulch underneath the equipment. I mean, it, it's, I'm not, I hate to say that it's an easy job. It's one of the easier jobs that we, yeah. Um, you know, it's still going to be time consuming and the cost of the mulch uh, has to be certified mulch. Um, yeah, and that, that's in the bid. I that's mean, right. In the right. Bid. Yeah, the initial cost is initial in the cost, bid. Right. But I'm saying, yeah. they, they had asked whether okay. if it had washed out, what would we do? Right, right. We'd have to replace yeah. it. And um, I believe it's like $800 a truckload on the certified yeah, under this mulch. Bid, yeah. right. What's that? Mm -hmm. How many truckloads would we need? It, it goes like? by square feet. And yeah, I'd, I'd have to do the calculation. I don't, I don't know what the square footage of this is. Um, 720, 728 yeah. square feet at 12 inch in depth. Correct. So, okay, well, you know, do a little bit more homework and then when Chris is here, we'll talk about it, okay? Absolutely. Yeah, I know you don't have anything to do with the weekend except to weed your garden. So <laughs> no, <ahead>. right? <laughs> okay. Anything <laughs> further? Thank you. Yes, yeah, Steve? Yeah, um, I'm going to present to you Monday night. I just don't want to blindside you. The day after the agenda closed, we got a settlement check for the recent roof damage at Carnwath, and I'm gonna ask that, that those okay. funds be transferred into the okay. Carnwath account. Okay. And I'll have those numbers for you. Was the, the settlement meeting. amount reasonable? It was, yeah, 5,000 somewhere in okay, that area so for, you think just that's for the damaged cover? portion okay. of the roof. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we'll add that in at the beginning. I'll, I'll just <coughs> note that as far as uh, any changes to agenda, and we can do that, okay? The only last, last thing I had was, uh, we mentioned this a number of months ago, obviously we were derailed for the last three months, but uh, having Lehigh Landscaping give us a quote to repair the stone wall in front of the emergency services building and put some gravel down where it's supposed to be in, in front of the building. Um, shouldn't be ex too expensive, but I'll get the quote so that we can at least uh, get that wall repaired. Okay. okay, any further items? If none, we have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Okay, second. second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. And thanks, Jeff, Brian, for coming out here and uh, bearing with us. But we'll get something done on Monday. Assuming Mr. Horan gets something done on Monday.